Hello everybody, welcome to this new live stream in the series where we are creating an entire game in C from scratch. We are almost done with the game. You know, I've been saying that for the past two streams, but today this is correct because all we have to do is to polish what we have. Every feature is already implemented and we spent, you know, the couple last uh, streams getting the major systems finished and the gameplay done. But now we're going to do some tweaking as well as some improvements, general improvements. And hopefully we're going to be ready. I'm not sure we're going to finish the game today, but uh, we are going to get to get it to a nice uh, spot, I think. As you can see, we have the bigger, the biggest piece of news we had in a while, which is the game uh, has now a Steam page where you can add to your wish list and uh, check it out when it releases. Uh, just so you guys know, let me just put the calendar here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna release 20, uh, 20 of September, September 20, 20th, yeah. Pretty sure. Uh, so we're gonna do a big polishing pass this week, probably a polishing pass next week as well. I don't know, it depends on how it goes. And it, it'll be done. Uh, I can already play that on my Steam. I think I'm gonna show you guys just for fun. So here's my Steam. And uh, the game is here. And we can also download the source code there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. So I managed to get that working. Pretty cool. So you can go to the store and add that to your wish list. Uh, it's gonna be free. The, the the game, the game, yeah. Both on Steam and HIO. But if you want to follow along what we've been doing now, you can go to the HIO page, and the game is already there for you to download both the game and the source code. So you can just click download now, and then you can download every episode source code. We are in episode 22, and you can go all the way from the first episode, download every source code. And you are welcome to give me a tip. But you can just click no thanks and just download the source code. And also uh, change the sort page quite a bit. I think it's way better now. It has some, like some key features. And uh, yeah, everything's great. And you can watch the previous live streams on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Dan Zaydan. If you go there, you can watch uh, here, uh, making a game from uh, in C from scratch. This is the playlist. You can start for every, every uh, you can start from the very first line of code and see everything being created all the way to where we are now. So I'm just going to uh, just going to open up the game here. Uh, I'm going up going to open up Visual Studio. I'm going to open up for coder so that you just make that cover your whole screen and uh, let's see game it's been a while <laughs> let's see okay so I'm gonna build an optimized build set development to one and uh, okay let's see yeah so this is the game we have so far uh, it's pretty much a breakout clone in the beginning. That was pretty cool, I think. But then we added a couple of crazy mechanics. Like, uh, we did the super breakout thing. Where, uh... Where we have power-ups. See, like this one. Then we have Breakout Clone, or Breakout Pong, <laughs> which is what if Pong was actually a breakout game? That's pretty cool. And then we did the same thing for Tetris, and this one we have to we have to uh, improve a little bit today in terms of like tweaking the speed and things like that. And then we have Breakout Space Invaders. So that's the game. We built. And we built that everything on a live stream, so you can watch the entire process. That'll be that'll be pretty, be a great learning experience, I think, to watch from the very first line of code all the way to the Steam release. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I did some tests implementing the Steam uh, API, the Steam SDK, 
and there was one major problem, which is, uh, in order for the Steam overlay to work, we should have an OpenGL or DirectX context, and we are doing software rendering ourselves. So unfortunately, we're not gonna have the Steam overlay in the game when you press like Shift Tab. That's not gonna happen, unfortunately. But the game will be on Steam, so you can already. Well, I think I hear a bug. Yeah, I can. I can hear one sound loop. I'm not sure which sound is it. Maybe it was a power up sound. I'm gonna have to improve that. So that's the plan for today. Uh, so if you wanna, if you wanna go to the HIO page, you can download the source code now to follow along. And you can also watch the previous episodes on on YouTube. And uh, the la yeah, the last time we did the asset system, that was pretty cool. That was like one huge overtaking. But today is more like an open thing. We have tons of small stuff to do. So. We're gonna do the, the polish fast, and we're not gonna do the online sub subsystem because since we're not gonna get the overlay, you're not gonna add achievements because they're not gonna have feedback for achievements. And I'm also not gonna have cloud save. I'm not gonna implement the online subsystem just for the cloud save. So the polish and the release. So I did a lot of notes uh, from last time. Oops, can grab the notes from here. Can get all the notes that I did based on uh, I play the game a little bit and things like that. So these are the things that I think we should uh, improve the game. There's also these notes. So there's this is this wrong thing. I'm gonna focus on these first, and then later we can uh, focus on these. Let's see. Get okay, user refresh rate. We're gonna do today. Make full screen launch prettier. I think it's working pretty nice. I tested that on, on Steam. Let me show you guys again uh, on my Steam page. And that was perfect. Let's see. Yeah, it's really fast though. I mean, we do have a widescreen really fast before. I don't think anyone cares. So yeah, more optimizations. I don't think we're going to need more optimizations. I, I did note a couple of things to clean up. But in terms of like serious, like explain the preamble, things like that. We're not gonna need it. I tested that on several systems and the game is working great. I even update, I, I don't think uh, it changed, but I updated the store page to say that we need like a the system requirements. Let's say yeah, pretty much any potato you have will be able to run the game. Uh, <laughs> which means that we did a good job because it's not like a super graphics intensive game, but we didn't use OpenGL. We did everything ourselves. So that was a challenge. So no need to do that, I think. SIMD async stuff, save when quit. I'm not sure we're gonna need that. Make the player return to the mouse cursor. Yeah, I don't really think. Make the audio safer. I think we've got a rare case of changing. Yeah, and the game, uh, game review. The, yeah. The audio thing I'm gonna, gonna, we were gonna work today. So, because there was a crash. Someone uh, on each, on each IO commented based on, uh, Come in this crash, so we're gonna have to fix that. And again, I'm gonna try to do this as well. Reveal the size of the player in the collision. Add a sound to that. Test the player scale at lower frame rates. Yeah, we're not gonna need to do that because we're gonna run pretty fast. So these are the things we need, I think, for the polish pass. Uh, we may add some things and we may not do everything, but these, this is the basic plan we have. So until the game's released in like two weeks, we're gonna work on most of these things. So the thing is, there's a game called Super Grid. So let's start, I suppose. So now with all that preamble, that was a pretty big preamble, but that, but that was a, uh, that was necessary because a lot of news and we are now on the final stretch, really, to release the game. It's gonna be pretty cool. I'm really happy with that, with how it turned out. I mean, I wasn't expecting to be that interesting. Uh, so yeah, the thing is, there is a game called Super Breakout, it was like an old RG game, and it wasn't like this. So since we are not actually implementing that game's ideas, like we are in like Tetris and, uh, and uh, well, the other games, 
I'm not going to make it called Super Breakout, so I'm gonna change the name. I'm gonna change the name like to let's see, it's in the menu. Super, yeah. I'm gonna change that to Power Breakout or something. That should be good enough. If you guys have any questions about anything, be sure to drop them on the chat, and uh, I'll answer it. So yeah, Power Breakout. Oh, the, the text is not centered. So we probably want to have to change that. Center. Uh, center uh, score text, probably. So yeah, and there's also a typo in the global variables. And we had that for like forever. Global variable. Well, global. Var yeah, very variable. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to fix this variable. Variable. It's not really necessary, but since variable, but since the, the since, since the code will be open sourced, I mean it already is, but it's nice to make everything kind of a cleaned up a little bit. So yeah. So I'm just going to replace. Okay, done. Make Tetris slower. Okay, so we're going to spend a little bit of time here just to make sure that the Tetris game is cool. I mean, it is cool, but I think it's too hard. I tried. I tried when I recorded the trailer because I did a, a new trailer. Now you guys can check that trailer. Just a note, both on Steam. I really like the way the trailer turned out. I added the soundtrack that I created for the game. Yeah, and I did this text thing. That was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Just, just for a second, I'm gonna let it run for you guys. Hey, open source game. You can play around and make all sorts of different changes. We are like in a thousand million frames per second. Or this is cool. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, and you can also watch that on YouTube. And I like and subscribe and stuff. Here. So, when I was recording that trailer, uh, I had a really hard time to finish the Tetris uh, game mode, which probably means that it's too hard, to be honest. It's pretty cool, I think, but uh, it may be too fast. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make maybe maybe can start at this speed. I'm gonna make it uh, get really slower, about in the middle. See, because it's way too fast at that point, and uh, when it, we have a lot of shapes like this. Makes it really hard. Yeah, see, if you get like a couple of misses, you're pretty much done. And I'm pretty much done. Yeah, yeah done once, done twice. Yeah, see, so that's that's no good. Uh, let's go to the levels. And uh, let's see, Tetris. It's in the simulate level, I think. Simulate level, if you are with Tetris, I don't even remember. Okay, so... Yeah, so, so this is what we should tweak. We are going through every enemy. Let me just open that up for you guys. So for every enemy, you're gonna add that initial Y, initial shape. Uh, let me see, what's that initial Y? That's 60. Okay, so yeah, plus the enemies. Why? So this is how much this is how much you moved, right? Times a very small number. So if I try to, to print this, print this print function was really cool. It's kind of a we should really focus on. I mean, this is a small game, but the larger the game, 
the more interesting it is to spend time working on uh, tools and stuff. So yeah, let me just focus on one again. It starts out as 180 and it goes all the way down to zero, I suppose. Well, I don't want to hit it. Well, yeah, so it starts out. I don't think it's gonna get to zero. Yeah, it goes to like 100. So, one thing we could do we could make this rate, uh, like this enemy P, have a bigger influence, like this. So, we're gonna have a bigger range of motion. Like, it's gonna start faster and it goes really slow. Let's see. Yeah, it starts at 200, which is fast but it should get slow way slower yeah see it's already getting pretty slow yeah it's gonna get sub 100 did yeah but at this point it's kind of impossible but I, I kind of liked those values but I think I'm gonna tweak this value now I'm gonna make even even uh, less than twice as fast as so, but 60 was probably too much now, so 60, you can do like 58. Yeah, um, you can try 55 and then uh, And then maybe maybe a little bit faster, maybe like 0.2. Let's see. Let me try to beat this game mode. You guys, you guys can download that on HIO even right now. You guys that are watching live, and uh, tell me what you think about these these changes. I mean, if it's too hard, for instance, or if it's not, if it's a good uh, difficult. Just a small note. We are sleeping in terms of uh, in terms of like frame rate. That's why it's locked at 60. However, we are not synced to the vertical uh, refresh rate. To the vertical, yeah, to the vertical bank. We are not because for that to work, we need OpenGL. So, but I mean, it's not gonna be that terrible. The the uh, worst case scenario, we're gonna get a little bit of tiring. Yeah, see, I think now it's 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 good. Yeah, now we got rotating shapes. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. So this is this is hard enough. Okay, I, I kind of like that. Maybe we can leave it like this for a while. Just so we play and uh, have a little bit more. A little bit more interesting. Nice. Oh crap. <laughs> oh, see? That was the other bug. The See that the we have like a five second thing and it's not updating. I, I yeah I wrote that other bug. And the mouse thing, it's gonna be kind of hard. When we go off the screen, the mouse is activated, and probably gonna have to avoid that. So let's leave it like this for now. Let me just open the window here. It's kind of hot. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna leave the Tetris here and like. Play test Tetris more. Okay, turtle not updating. So we just saw that that was the problem, and we're probably gonna add. What was that? Yeah, the mouse. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. Like get the mouse to not reappear if you leave the window making a fast movement. 
So for the slow, let's see, yeah. If it's slow, player t is greater than zero. We draw the turtle. And uh, it's weird. Where does it get updated? Where does the comment t get updated? Yeah, it's here. Yeah, see, I kind of just forgot. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I kind of just forgot about that. The turtle. Yeah, the turtle. Let's see. The turtle. Oh. So we're gonna add the turtle here, which is the slow player T. Let's see. Vertical controls is here. Strong blocks is here. Comet is here. Number. Invincibility. Invinci Where is invincibility? Yeah, invincibility is in a different place. It's together with the rendering. That's okay. Hey, I see you streaming again. Is the final stretch? It is the final stretch, man. Uh, you know, I don't think you saw this, but we have a Steam page. So it is the final stretch, the final polish. I think it's going to be like one or two more streams uh, to get the game on Steam because it's already now, uh, it's already there for you to wish list. And yeah, it's really cool, man. I wasn't expecting to get to this point when I started live streaming this game. So it's really, really awesome to see the result. And you can also see the whole process on YouTube. Wow, yeah, bearded 3D. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. So the game will be released on Steam. That's that's really cool. I just finished adding the page and the uh, trailer in the last few days. That's why I didn't stream. Uh, so it is the final stretch. We have just a few polishing things to do. Well, yeah, just a few things to do. I think we're gonna run through that pretty quickly. Most of them is pretty pretty easy. We're gonna run through those polish passes, and then it's gonna be released on Steam. That's and you can watch the whole process. I mean, on uh, on my YouTube channel. You can watch from the very first line of code, the entire process, not even that many, it's like, uh, let me go to the playlist, it's like 21 episodes we have so far, and in total it's going to be like 23, including the release episode. So yeah, it's 21 episodes, when when I uh, programmed the entire thing, the whole thing, you see all the mistakes I did, all the cool gameplay ideas that we, we changed, and uh, yeah, that was awesome. And uh, now, yeah, now it's the final stretch, man, I'm really, really excited, really happy. It's kind of hard, you know, th that's why making games is so awesome, because it is really hard to not give up in the middle of the process, but when you, when you don't give up, what is it called, Breakout? It's called Break Arcade Games Out, <laughs> which is a pretty bad name, I'll admit. Uh, it's, you can already download the source code on the HIO if you want to watch and uh, play around the source code. And on Steam, it's the same thing. Uh, it's a pretty bad name, but I don't know, that's the name I came up with. Because I don't want I don't want it to call to be called Breakout because there was an already, already a game called Breakout, right? However, uh, calling Break Arcade Games out is pretty cool because the idea of the game is that you play several arcade games like Palm, Space Invaders, Tetris, S, Breakout. So the idea is, is what if every arcade game had to be like Breakout? So that's the basic idea. I'm not sure. If you guys have any better name suggestions, I'll take that. The game's not released yet, so it can change. <laughs> yes, it's really cool. Uh, so we should be good to go in terms of the turtle bug. Let's just see if we get the... Uh, well, maybe the pawn one, we can get the turtle pretty quickly. Let's see. The TNT. That's the inverse controls. Another TNT. Let's see. Yeah, there's the turtle. Let's see. Okay, so yeah. It updated, although I couldn't last long because it's kind of hard when you get the turtle. That's the turtle, it's kind of hard to say. The slow player, you can call that slow player. Yeah, that was awesome. Strong blocks, everything's nice. TNT. Another one, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, so we fixed that bug. As you said, I find it hard to stay motivated on a project. Any tips? You know, the biggest tip I have, in this case, is find a very small game jam for you to work on. Like, two days is great, 
because you're probably not going to get demotivated on today's. Uh, I, I, uh, I joined the Community Game Jam last week, another reason I didn't stream. Uh, and you, you can watch my results on each other. That was a pretty crazy game I created. <laughs> you can play that on my, uh, let's see. You can play that here, Liar's Map. And uh, one week is a bit too much. Uh, if you have motivation problems, and everyone has it, so you have to really tame that beast. So I suggest two-day projects, most. And uh, if, if you come here in the Liars Map, and I did a video about why I love making games, it's on, also on my YouTube channel, and I talk a little bit about this motivation thing there. And uh, because it is ups and downs, and uh, in my three and a half year game, I also, I also did a three and a half year project, Man, that was a uh, that was tough, man. <laughs> I released that for for PC and PS4. Three and a half years is a long time, and I had several motivations problems along the way. Thankfully, I wasn't by myself on those projects. So when you have a team, the motivation really, you know, it's really cool because everyone motivates one another. But the problem is, I was alone in the first year and in the last year on this project. And to be honest, even in the last year which the game was already pretty much done, I thought about quitting the game. In the last year, I spent like two and a half years, and even after that, I thought about quitting. So it's not hard. So the tip, the biggest tip is do a very small project. And uh, the great thing about making this game jam, the community game jam here, uh, is that I, I created a thread here in the community. I don't think it's gonna be visible now because everyone changed, but uh, let's see, progress. I created a progress. Uh, thread here. Oh, well, it's pretty pretty deep down here. Progress. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. But it was great because everyone was uh, showing like screenshots and stuff. So whenever I was like, oh, I don't know, man, I'm, this game's kind of hard. It's kind of weird. It's too abstract. People are not gonna get it. I kept, you know, reading people's progress, and I was really motivated by that. So that's one way of doing it by yourself having a motivation of the team, right? But uh, one week is probably too much if you have motivation problems. So I suggest doing like two two day game jam. It's great because then it's gonna finish, right? And it's yeah, that's the biggest tip. It's pretty cool though when when you uh, when you manage to when you manage to win that. Hello, I'm learning C and like the game. Uh, I think I don't see the whole. And I like to make a game like you did. How did you learn game development? Well, my journey was kind of weird. Because uh, I first I first just played around with tutorials in Unity and stuff, then tutorials on uh, Unreal, and that was uh, when I really started liking the game that I was making. So you know that this game, the three and a half year game I worked on, Iliosis Hunt, I, I have all the progress on YouTube as well. So I started out just making characters and uh, and like that, and then I just like watch tutorials how to make the character move. So I managed to make the character move like this. So, yeah, in Unreal, I was like, how to make a character move in Unreal, how to make the movement stuff. And then how to make a character aim. And uh, then I learned how to make it aim, right? And that was pretty hard at the time. I was spent a long time figuring out how, how to do the whole 360 degree rotation. That was, pretty, that was pretty tough. Then I was like, okay, how to make a shoot, how to make an enemy. And I started building a game like this. And, uh, and like, uh, like Lunatic Alligator asked, this process, the process I did for this game, which was my first commercial game, a big game, uh, you really need, need a lot of motivation. So I'm not sure I recommend the way I did it because it's really one step at a time, man. And then if you see a couple months later, this I was working by myself, right? I had this first level, which was pretty cool already. Kind of uh, had some interesting art. Had some like progress and death system and uh, some enemies that uh, run at you. However, this is not a game. That's a very small demo, right? Uh, very small. It was like five minutes of gameplay. So in order to turn that into a game, that's the problem. Because I, I did this in like three months, I suppose, without learning, so, uh, without learning previously. So I was like searching tutorials how to make uh, door animation. And I learned about timelines in a real, how to make destructible objects, how to make particle systems. And I kept advanced, advancing that. So this is the point I got. However, at this point, I was like, oh my God, in order to make this a full playable game with our, uh, game with hours of gameplay, 
I'm gonna have a hard time. So I start focusing on the alpha of the game, which is like feature completeness. So at this point, I focus on just uh, designing levels. I learned a lot about game design at this point. So I built uh, the level sketch without focusing on making it look good. And at this point, I had a lot of people on the team because that's the thing. Once you have a prototype like this, I had like a vertical slice, so to speak, that demo and, a, uh, and, a, and a, the alpha version, which is this one that you can play the whole level. It's a lot easier to get people on board with your game idea. So I managed to get a lot of people, also, also students, you know, no experienced people, just people like me who were, were trying to learn to get together. So we built, but then it took a while. So it was like one year after that, this is what we got. So see how much it improved? It's pretty much the same thing, right? But it was improved a lot because I had like people who did the 2D art, the 3D art, the animations, another programmer. You know, people really got together and uh, built this and that's really cool. And that's not even the final thing. And uh, yeah, I did an announcement trailer. And then I did some like some dev vlogs. Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Zayden. That's me in 2016. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and uh, then we, we continue to improve the game. And at that point, we, we kind of got the basic idea for the game, but the problem was we need to make a lot of content. And uh, that's one big tip. Don't make content rich games because games full of content is the strength of like bigger studios. Like we had to do like desert levels and volcano levels and tech tree and lab and, lab and swamp levels. We had to do a lot of variations and it's a lot of work to add all those variations. And I'm really focused right now on making like smaller games that you can take uh, you can get more bang for your buck, so to speak. So that was the progress we got together at this point. That was in 2016. Uh, so at this point, we finished the basic uh, game, basically, at this point. So we finished the character, we improved the animations. We managed to get the motion capture studio for free in a university here in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. So we, we, we had a motion capture session where I was the actor, because you know, in the games, right? And I recorded the animations and then we cleaned it up and uh, programmed. That was pretty cool, man. So the animations looked pretty great. I was really proud of that. Yeah. So we spent a long time, like two years. Yeah, the, the, the team worked on the game for two years. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of work to get all these variations and enemies and, uh, and things. However, we wanted to release for the PS4, right? So at this point, we, we didn't have any money and we needed to show that advance, so we did a Kickstarter. Uh, so yeah, but we failed. <laughs> uh, that was pretty cool though. We learned a lot. So we, we got a partnership with people who would do the art book, should we manage to get the money. Although we did we did manage to, to get a partnership and the guy the guy created is, uh, let's see. This is actually, uh, let me go back. We also have two statues. We, we, we managed to get a real statue. I can really get, get that uh, in the other stream. I don't know, it's right there in the other room. A, a physical statue for the, I'm gonna get it. Just, just a second. So this is what we built for the Kickstarter. And it looked really, really nice. The, the guy who, who, who did the statue is really, really talented. And he actually redid the design, improved a lot. It's kind of a, kind of broke a little bit here, this version. Yeah, here, this mustache here. Uh, but it was great. So this is a, a real statue. However, since we didn't get the Kickstarter money, and it was only, we were only asked for like $15,000. We just to get the last push to release the game. But since we uh, didn't get the money, uh, we only did like two or three statues. You know, people uh, couldn't, couldn't uh, didn't get that. And we didn't release uh, for the Xbox One and stuff. However, uh, yeah, so, so when we did, didn't get the Kickstarter money, we were like, okay, uh, we kind of uh, dismantled the team. And this was, July 2016 and the game released on August 2017 so for one year after the Kickstarter where the team uh, was kind of a split up and stuff I worked on the game by myself so that was that was uh, even though we already had a lot of stuff in the game 
As you can see, inspired by Crash Bandicoot. It's really hard, man. The motivation thing. It's really hard. So I was by myself only. I was like, oh my god, this game's not gonna sell. The Kickstarter people hated it and stuff. Uh, however, we did manage to launch that on the PS4. So this is on the PlayStation channel. So see, August 15, 2017, we released that on the PS4 and on the PC. So that was a huge victory. Uh, so this is how I learned game. Oh, uh, th this was the question: was how I learned game development, right? This is kind of a, a tangent, but okay. This is, this is great, man. This is, we're just polishing the game, right? And uh, and after I published this game, you were very inspired. Yeah, but this is where it gets good. The story, man. It released the game and it didn't sell a lot. If you go, if you see that on Steam, it's like 38 reviews. So uh, not a, not a lot of people play the game, which was kind of expected. I mean, it was our first commercial game, right? Uh, and we got some uh, some some kind of a negative reviews. I mean, we got a lot of positives, like 81 positive reviews, 81 percent, which is kind of good. When we released, we were like up to 90, but since we got to like it's pretty cheap, it's like 10 bucks, and we got like 50 percent off promotions. So people were like, okay, it's kind of buggy. Uh, I don't know. The jump felt weird. The physics. Oh well, the final boss that was a bug. I don't know. People complained a lot about a lot of stuff because you know the first game, right? So I was like, okay, I need to take one step back. Because three and a half years for this game was great. I learned a lot by making this game. But I need to take a step back. So I focused on actual learning how to program for real. Because that's the thing. The way I started, like I showed you, uh, just like, oh, how do I how do I make the character move and stuff? While it's an incremental thing to make the game actually work, which is awesome, which I managed to do, right? I didn't actually learn for real. I was like kind of copying the code from one place. And since it was like Unreal's blueprint, I didn't have, I didn't actually program. It was all like uh, visual scripting and stuff. So that was like another uh, thing, another point of making uh, making it less robust. So that's the thing. I wasn't doing very very much uh, robust games at this at this point. So I learned about handmade hero. And Handmade Hero is a series, a uh, tutorial series, made by uh, Casey Mortori, uh, which is hero. Uh, no, it's handmadehero.org. Yeah, I'm gonna throw that in the chat in case you guys want to know more. And uh, Casey is a very, very experienced game programmer who's been in the industry for probably longer than I've been alive. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> certainly longer than I've been alive, I think. Uh, and he and he decided to teach that through through this tutorial series. Uh, so see, he starts he starts out, you know, setting up, uh, there's an intro to C. So if you want to learn C, however, this is kind of advanced and that's the point I want to make, you know? So he has a lot of tutorials and by a lot, I mean a lot about everything you can possibly imagine in game, pretty much game engine programming, not, not so much in game design and gameplay, but in terms of programming. So I did, I, I did a lot of tutorials in this series uh, and I learned a lot, but it was really hard. So I really had to push myself because it's not like it's not like a, an easy introduction. It's not like beginner friendly. It's really really hard. But I managed to do it. So if you go to my HIO page, you can see my progress. It's kind of funny because I managed to release that in 2017. If you go to 2018, for instance, well, let me go to and you see the games I released back then. It was like really simpler, like. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I did like a Pong game, which was pretty bad. And this was after releasing. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see, right? And that was right after releasing the huge game. So I took a huge step back to make sure I really understood the process. So that was like September. 2000. Yeah, that was one year after the game released. So I spent one year learning programming for real. So at this point, I started to improve a little bit. I did a more complicated Pong guy. Then I worked on. Uh, uh, startup for a while, and then this is the point where I am now. Now I'm pretty confident in programming. Like I learned a lot, and that was taking a step back. So now I think I'm, I'm capable of tackling bigger projects again. Not three and a half year long project for motivation reasons because it's kind of a, it's not like a, I'm not like a full time indie now at this point in my life, but uh, I am comfortable a lot in programming. So that was kind of a, my my journey. It's kind of hard to to recommend what to do. I mean. If you really f love making games and want to learn that, you should probably d do what I did and go like 
grab a grab an engine and start doing like a game step by step. Like how do I make a character move? And and uh, how do I do how do I do the aiming system? How do I make it shoot some enemies? All the way, hopefully, to a cool launch. But I wouldn't recommend that you spend three and a half years on the game. I really wouldn't. But I know I, I did, and I <laughs> I can't say I re I regret it. So I don't know. Take that with a grain of salt. However, it's really important at some point, and I did that after the game, you could probably do that before. So if you're starting in focusing on programming, maybe the best call would be to start learning programming for real and do incremental steps. And that's going to help you a lot in the motivation thing. So you can do a game in like two days pretty easily, even if you don't know a lot about programming. And then, uh, and then do a little bit more complex game in three days, then one week, then two weeks, then one month. And if you do that, if you do like 10 games, Release that on each I.O. I don't even have 10 games in each I.O. So I, I should really do more games a lot, yeah. And then you focus on bigger games, you're going to be more confident, you're going to be more experienced, your games are going to be better, and you're, gonna have, you're not going to have uh, motivation problems because you're going to see your improvements incrementally. Uh, so I am, well, now is my plug, right? I am working on a tutorial series about how to program your game in C++, which is very beginner-friendly. It's not like uh, if you haven't, program anything in your life beginner-friendly, but it's pretty beginner-friendly. beginner, beginner friendly. If you have any questions, you can drop them on, on the comments and I'm going to try to answer that. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash danzaydan, if you go to that, you can go, uh, you can watch that and you're going to learn a lot. And we're going to do Pong for the tutorial series. I'm going to do a more complex one later on. But yeah, if you do that tutorial series, you can be able to get a Pong clone. And then you can do more complex games like well, similar games like Breakout, Space Invaders, things like that. And then maybe you can watch this series, which is the game in C, which is a lot more complicated. We did like asset streaming, we did both threading, we did a lot of stuff. Uh, and then you can go and watch uh, the Handmade Hero tutorials. We're going to learn a lot, but this is pretty advanced. And the problem is, this is huge. This is like hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay, of gameplay, of uh, <laughs> tutorials. So, I don't know, I don't want to do that big. I mean, this star is pretty short, the, the how to program a game in C++. This, making a game in C, seems since this live stream is pretty open, like we've been do, we've been live streaming for like 40 minutes and uh, we didn't do a lot because it's kind of it's kind of an open development kind of kind of thing. It's a lot longer, so that's two, two hours, four hours, two hours and stuff. But focusing on the tutorial series, we should be able to get along pretty nicely. Uh, why did you choose C for a game that is C++? Well, I like C way better than C++ because it's a lot simpler. I wish there were a couple of C++ features in C, but uh, I don't really miss it a lot. But the thing is for simplicity. I really don't like this crazy complicated code. Code is supposed to be the way you express. The more complicated it is, the harder it is to express, and the more complicated it is to follow the game. So I'm not a big fan of C++. That's why I chose C for this project. However, the tutorial system I'm doing C++ because that's what the industry uses. So I am uh, the tutorial series I am using C++ and there's a couple of problems with C as well. Like when I try to implement the Steam SDK for for our game now for the breakout game, when I implemented the Steam SDK, there was the problem of the Steam SDK actually being in C++ and a couple of things like there were a couple of crazy templates used for uh, callbacks and stuff. So I, I had to create my own header files for those. And since we are software rendering for this for this game. I ended up not even finishing the SDK, so it wasn't a problem. But if, if this game was supposed to use a lot of Steam features, we we're going to have a harder time just because it's in C, not C++. So I really don't recommend C in, for larger game projects. Certainly C++ is the best tool for that today. But uh, for a smaller games like this breakout game, certainly it certainly works. Have you tried Zig or Odin? I, I really wanted to try Odin because I think it's great. It has some awesome ideas. And it feels great too. And yeah, a language that focusing on the joy of programming is really one focus. Uh, it's really the goal, right? So, but I haven't tried yet, just because I'm in the hype train for JAI. <laughs> so I'm on the JAI team, and uh, I have been for a few years. Ever since I started to learning for real programming, which was 2017, I've been, uh, which is not that long ago. It's like two two years. Yeah, I've been on the hype train. So I'm patient. I've been in hype train for a few things as well. So yeah. So I don't want to jump into Odin and then jump into JAI because uh, switching languages, there's a small, there's a, well, not, not that small, but there's kind of a, a significant 
friction thing until you learn all the ins and outs of the language. Because I don't want to program like just like a program now in the, those languages because they have a lot of cool meta features which I really want to use, right? So I really want to dedicate a lot in learning that. But since a JI is going to launch and that's probably going to be the language, I, I'm kind of waiting for that. So same thing for four coder. I really wanted to do like a, a, a custom layer for four coder, but since the beta is going to launch the end of this year, I'm going to wait. So yeah, I'm not really in a hurry uh, even to change languages because I really like C. C is pretty, pretty nice. And I'm, yeah, so finish turtle not update. Getting the sleep granularity. Okay, so that's a very small bug. Is the game you are working on complete from scratch? No, it, yes, man, it's completely from scratch. There's no even, not even OpenGL, man. <laughs> the, the, oh, the whole rendering we did ourselves. So these are draw rectangle in pixels. <laughs> and uh, we, are, we are going to improve that, I think, today. The way we iterate through this pointer here. We, we don't need to multiply that every frame. We can just add the pitch. Uh, we did the, the rotated rect, that was pretty, that was a little bit harder to do. Did rotated rect, we did the bitmap support, so we can draw bitmaps in our software rendering. So we do texture factoring, calculate the UVs, and everything you can watch on YouTube. See, our, the, first, the first day we did a, a basic rendering, then we focused on some gameplay, we did the prototype, some gameplay more, and then some levels, the crazy ideas, some particle system, adding some cool animations. Then we went back to the graphics, added bitmap support, added rotated support, added audio, which was pretty cool, added parallel, parallelism to, to the audio system and mixer, implemented the, the menu, the transitions, the sound effects, those are pretty cool. We optimized the game, got that five, five times faster. The game's running great. We finished some animations, that was pretty cool as well. Finished the level design, added camera shake, uh, collision, and uh, animation levels, and the last stream we finished asset system. And now all I have to do is to, to small things, like small polish things, to release the game on Steam. Guys, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, when I program, so yeah, no engines at all. When I program the game, sometimes uh, sometimes I leave your VOD in the background running when I feel the Steam running out, and I take a few minutes off to get demotivated, re-motivated by watching your video albums and feel like I'm coding with someone. That's awesome to hear, man. I'm really glad that you're enjoying the, the live streams. Uh, it's kind of hard to make the game entirely on a live stream uh, because sometimes I really want to like search a bug off stream or uh, I want to add something quickly. I'm really motivated. I want to do something some, something quickly. But I, I was really glad I stuck to that uh, plan till the end. It's really worth it now that I'm pretty close to, to releasing it, just finishing up some polishing. I recommend C or C++, but without using much of the C++ specific function functionalities uh, for any beginners. It might be hard with C at first, but you really learn programming. Yeah, uh, I also agree of not using crazy C++ in the beginning. Uh, even even great like tutorials, like there's the great story from the, uh, the, the Cherno guy, Cherno project. Yeah, he has great tutorials. Those are a bit on the long side though. Uh, but it's great, and it has awesome C++ tutorials as well. But it gets really crazy really fast, and that's my problem with C++, man. I mean, C is so straightforward. I mean, you have those tools, which are not that many, and then you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. So I really think a beginner programmer should learn C, not C++. And then, the more the bigger the project you do, the more C++ features you add. Like, uh, well, maybe you're going to add some templates here and things like that. Uh, why not OpenGL? Well, I could use OpenGL, nothing against it, but uh, it's really awesome to write your game, your, your render from scratch. It's really cool to have, uh, first of all, it's great to debug it, right? You can go like, you can step into the pixels and see the values of, like, do we did alpha blending and we see where the love happened, do we optimize it? So it's a great learning experience. So that was one of the goals. The other goal is because it's, it's kind of fun as well. It's not doing like crazy stuff like 3D and stuff. Or lighting. We're just doing some bitmaps, drawing, rotating stuff. That, that was pretty pretty easy. Uh, but next game, which I'm planning to do a tutorial on, is going to be another simple game. But I'm not going to do as much live streams. I think so I'm going to focus more on this tutorial uh, structure, a like step by step thing that I added later on stuff. Then I'm going to use OpenGL. People like OpenGL and stuff, so I'm going to use that. I love that guy. He has videos from C++ OpenGL. He's making an engine in C++. I'm really excited for his engine because he. He's really experienced. I mean, 
if you see kind of a, a his rendering videos, it's, I don't know, I have fixing skeletal animation, yeah. Hey, what's up? If you watch like uh, some of his rendering, so yeah, so he wrote that rendering from scratch, and it's awesome, man. It's PBR and you can control all sorts of crazy stuff. So he's really, really talented. Uh, really knows his stuff. Yeah, his his videos is fixing a reflection bug. Uh, however, he uses like really modern C++. So that's why I'm not super excited for his engine per se. I mean, I don't think I'm going to use the engine, but uh, the tutorial is going to be great. I, I am really looking forward to getting like to this cool uh, rendering features because I think I'm going to learn a lot from him. Uh, would be great to have a mouse sensitivity config. Try to play it on my setup was really hard. Hmm, that was a good idea, man. I think I may, I may actually. Uh, it's kind. Of, uh, I'm not sure how. Yeah, uh, okay. I think I'm gonna at, at least know that mouse. Sensitive, uh, sensitive config. I think I'm gonna add that. That's a that's a good point. C plus plus is crazy. I kind of wish beginner programmers uh, could have been back there in the days of starting with no OS and just playing basic cursor. Those days are gone. Man, I didn't live in those days. <laughs> just to get an idea, when I was born, there was already PS one games running 3D with hardware. <laughs> when I was born, when I started playing games. It's already like PS2 and like open world 3D games. And I w when I started making games, oh man, that was crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, see the, that era, that era of uh, programming with a no OS or, or things like that. I kind of wish I saw that as well because I, I see people like Jonathan Blow talking about that all the time. Is it possible to program in a PC without OS, just files? Yeah, it is possible. You could, uh, you could do that. However, since everything runs on drivers today, especially like even USB, even mouse and keyboard, you're gonna have a hard a hard time in those elements, like getting a USB mouse to work. So it's not it's not it's not that easy, unfortunately. Uh, so today is more complicated than that. There's a video about it. There's a twenty thousand line, a uh, twenty million, twenty million lines. Is it twenty? Yeah lines of code pods and stuff like that. The 30 million, it's not even 20, it's the 30 million lines of code. You can watch that on this idea of like programming, uh, well, understanding the machine and be able to do that. So, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, VZ, VZ, Amorel, VZ Amorel, how do you suggest the mouse sensitivity thing? We could just add a text file that you can config that off the game that could be that would be pretty easy. You can do that even today, just to add a text config file. But if you want to do that in game, I'm not sure how we should do that because we don't really have an interface for changing this here. We could add a button like here in the side, where like you click, you you hold, and then you slide change it. But that would be weird. I don't I don't know if I'm a fan of that or not. I think I'm just going to add the config file. Let me know what you think about that. If you think that's a good idea, since it's just, you suggested mouse sensitivity. Uh, yeah, like a TXT file, text file that comes with a game. Yeah, nowadays it's really hard. Back, back then it was all that you could do, but you didn't use PCs. You could use a C64 or some other computer model. Man, it would have been really cool to live that back then. I mean, to see all the crazy innovation in terms of hardware that would, that would be pretty cool that would have been pretty cool to see and live by and live through yeah okay he thinks it's okay so we're gonna add a config file add a config file we can probably do that today change the mouse sensitivity that would be pretty cool to do that today since there's a lot of people on stream like 15 people it's a lot so i think we're gonna add that so this stream's gonna run for a long time guys it's kind of early, so yeah. Take, but yeah. Uh, set the sleep granary. Oh, okay, so this is the sleep granary thing. Uh, I tested on several several computers, and the, the performance is great. Uh, however, we have a small problem. Of uh, we have a small problem of the sleep thing. Let's go back where we sleep. Here, we are sleeping in milliseconds. But some computers, especially older computers, this computer, we didn't see any problems as well as, well as the other computers I tested, but older computers, like 
older uh, laptops and stuff, the sleep granularity is pretty high. It's probably like 10 milliseconds. So if you set to sleep like two milliseconds, it's gonna leap for 10 milliseconds. And that's not what we want. So it's really easy. We just call this time begin period function in Windows and it should be good to go. I can test that on this PC. I'm gonna have to test that off stream and then next stream we're gonna see if that worked. But it's really easy. It's just a function that sets the resolution for sleeping and other things. So we just call time begin period and say how much is the period. So we should set like to one millisecond. That's basically it. So uh, just when we start the game, I'm gonna set the time begin period to one. That's it. And I don't think we're gonna see any change like at all. Uh, yeah. Well. Okay, so we have to link against another Windows library. Let's see, which is uh, WinMM. Okay, so let's link against that. Um, let's see, where do we have other libraries here? Okay, so that's in this library, and we should be good to go. Let's see. Yeah, see, so no change, no apparent change, but uh, hopefully that solved the sleep granularity on the other computer that was like 10 milliseconds or so. Okay. That was it. See, these things are really easy. Lock the frame rate to the device gaps. Okay, so this is another thing. We should be able to get the user refresh rate and not hard code this. Pretty easy as well. We have we have the I think we have the get device gaps on MSDN, I'm pretty sure. Which uh, retrieves the device specific information. Well, that's useful, right? So we pass an HDC uh, and an index. Item to be returned. Well, let's see. So, driver version technology, horizontal size, bits, planes, number of brushes, number of planes, colors, clip gaps, palettes. Is it not the right call? Oh, yeah, B refresh. This is it. The current vertical refresh rate. So uh, we're gonna call get device caps. By passing the HTC and this guy. So we should return an integer which is like the uh, refresh rate. Okay. And with that, we can just set the the, the last DT to be the refresh rate which is 60, for instance, uh, as a float, divided by, uh, is it correct? Divided by 1,000, um, 1, because we want in seconds. So 60 divided by 1,000. No, that's not correct. It's one over 60. Yeah, so it's yeah, one over 60. Yeah, it's just one over 60. Okay. <laughs> and this guy's just going to use the last DT. I'm going to step through this code just to make sure that is it is correct. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Refresh rate is 60. Last DT. I think we got that optimized the way. Last DT. Yeah. That's okay. The refresh rate was correct. 60. Perfect. So now people should be able to run on higher refresh rate monitors. And I can't test that because I don't have a high refresh rate monitor. But if you do, uh, let me know if it works correctly or like if some crazy stuff happens. Okay, so now it should be locked to the correct, uh, to the correct, yeah, target DT. This really doesn't matter because this is the audio. So this is okay. Optimizing the row pixel pointer. So this is a, a small optimization. I don't think we need to do this, but it's kind of a, a good to know. Let's see. This is the, the, the as well. Oh, we also built a profile. I kind of forgot about that. That's pretty cool. We built a profiler for the game, man. <laughs> we did a lot of stuff on this uh, <laughs> on this series. We did the profiler. Yeah, we programmed the profiler and then optimized that on one stream, one four and a half hour stream. That was crazy. Hmm. That was pretty cool. Uh, okay. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Okay, and I lost my. Okay. However, this is not well optimized because this is the thing. For every row, this is just the draw racks, right? Uh, let me let me draw in case you're not you don't remember. But this is the thing. Let's say we want to draw. Let's say we want to draw a rectangle. Let's say we want to draw this rectangle. Okay, so we set the pixel pointer here and then add it, add it by one, which is okay. And then it has to set the pixel pointer to here. And this is what we're doing. Like for every row, we calculate the new pixel pointer. But the more effective way to do this would, would, would be to add a fixed amount based on this pointer. So instead of just having to do this all the time, like buffer with times y and stuff, we just calculate the pitch or stride, which is the common name for, for this uh, amount that we need to go to, to change, uh, change like this. And then you can just add the pixel pointer. So the pixel is going to start out in this position. Okay. And then we also have a, a, a pitch. You can call that stride, I think it's better, stride. And the stride is going to be the width. Since we are going by one and one pixel, we don't have to multiply that by the size of U32, but we, sh we should multiply that by four if we're going like one byte at a time, but that's not the case. So I update the pixel and then I should be, I should be at this point. I should really just create like a row. Yeah, I'm going to create a row. And then, uh, and then set the and set here. The, oops. And then here I'm gonna set the pixel to the row. And then here I'm gonna set the pixel. Well, row plus equals stripe. Yeah. And then uh, pixel equals row. So instead of doing that whole add and stuff and multiplication stuff, we're doing just one add. So this is more optimized. Let's see if we didn't break anything. No, we're still good to go. So we didn't change anything visually. And probably the performance was very small, but it's a nice cleanup thing to do. And there's also, it's probably a better way to do this in terms of code. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm gonna do these in the other cases as well. So I'm gonna add this guy, remove this guy, add this guy. This is for the draw rectangle uh, transparent pixels. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Okay. Okay. And let's see when I iterate again. This is the. <laughs> this is our <laughs> number drawing. Very effective. Uh, font. The font's okay. This is the draw rect. See, this is the uh, draw rect, transparent rotated rect. Probably have can do the same thing here. And at this point, I'm gonna set the row plus equals the stride. Set a pixel to the row, and should be good to go. Um, let's see what else. The rotated rect. Oh yeah, same same thing, but it's not transparent. See, this render we did a lot of stuff to be really specific in some cases, so it's kind of confusing. So. If you really wanted to focus on making a good software render, you have to clean this up a lot. But that's not the case here. It's just to make an educational and fun thing to do. Uh, I think it served its purpose pretty pretty well. So, oh, here I do have the stride. Stride. But this stride is V times the bitmap height. Oh. Source pixels. Plus the stride. The, this is, I'm going to call that the UV stride just because I want to think too much about that. And uh, let's see. Mm. Yeah, we kind of optimized that away here. The transparent rotated pixels. Mm. Yeah. Mean bound x plus one, mean bound y plus one. Yeah, well, 
I'm not sure saving that in a variable is going to make it better or worse. And I don't want to... Well, check out the stream some other time, but I'll see non unity game programming without the regrets. Of what level? <laughs> Thanks for the stream. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, I I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> so, same thing here. You should use the X bound and the Y bound as well. Okay. And uh, let's just make sure we didn't break anything before we continue. Okay. We didn't. Oh, let me just see again. Yeah, we didn't break. Anything. Okay, good. Good. Uh, and here I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do the same thing. Oops. Let's try. Let's see. Same thing here. Pixel, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna calculate that every frame. But here I am going to set the row plus the stripe and the pixels. It's gonna be equal to the row. Inbound. Well, in this case, I'm gonna use x0 and uh, y1. Maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. I don't remember if that was a good optimization or not. Mm, pixel. Probably run with the profiler on just to make sure we didn't do anything stupid. It's also nice for you guys to see the profile. It's not, it's not like the <laughs> great profiler. We did that like in 30 minutes or so, one hour. I don't know. Yeah, we're pretty good. We try making that full screen. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna turn the development mode off. Uh, yeah, we're running, we're running that pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think it changed anything, to be honest. I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna test performance again after those things. Oh, we also have the sub pixel rectangle. Oh, but it's just a transparent one, and I think there's no. No, yeah, that's it. That's those are the random calls. So we did a little small cleanup. I think it's a, a little bit better. It's not much of a difference. Let's see. In the transition block, don't draw the blocks. Okay, so this is actually a problem. So we have this cool animation, right? See In the lever transition. However, let's see. I'm gonna destroy a few blocks. Take a look at those destroy blocks. I'm gonna press the transition animation now. See that they come back? That's because in the menu, when we do the transition, draw level transition, we iterate through the blocks. That's weird. We are certain if the block is alive. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the blocks. Uh, Oh, maybe we zero the blocks before. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. I don't remember this code. Let's go uh, pointer to a block. If there's no life, continue. That's what we should do. If there's no life, uh, draw a pixel, dude. How come it's not working? Let's see. Oh, okay, I was. I was in the wrong one. This is the level transition. Let's say two to gameplay. And this is the level transition to menu. And this one we're not checking. And this one we should check. Okay. So that was the problem. Now it should be good to go. I I really like doing these these uh, polish passes. But now we don't have an animation, why not? Oh, because this is not main, this is gameplay. I really like doing these small uh, polish passes because it feels like we, we're doing s such a huge amount of progress because we are crossing a lot of stuff off the list. Those are pretty small stuff. I really like doing like these huge things like we did last stream was about doing the asset system. Well, it's not working. 
I really like doing that. But uh, this, do, doing these small things I really like as well. So that was clearly not working. Draw simulate block for level. Draw X pixel block plus plus. If there's no life, continue. Uh, yeah, this is weird. Let's see, life. Continue. Let's see. When do we draw? Okay, yeah, because we're doing the iteration here. So block. Let's, let's shoot it aside. Oh well. Okay, but now we can go back to this guy. I kind of forgot. I'm kind of forgetting a lot of stuff today. Okay. It kind of worked. Well, it's kind of hard to see. But I think one block that was supposed to draw didn't. Draw correctly. Well, I'm not sure it's gonna be hard to debug now. But it's not that big of a problem, it's just a small visual thing. Ah, I think this is okay. I think this is okay. Now, optimize the overdraw in the transitions back to the menu using transparent correct. I don't think I'm gonna need to do this optimization because the thing is. Uh, in the transition back to the menu. Yeah, in our transition back to the menu, we're doing a lot of over overdraw because we have to draw the, uh, let's see exactly the thing. Menu to menu. First, we clear, clear the screen with, a, with the arena color. And then we do the transparent rect. On the whole, uh, on the whole arena. See, this guy. So, mm, so this problem, we are overdrawing twice the screen. The screen. However, uh, using transparent rect, the other option would be to add a transparent rect for every every block, instead of like adding a another solid on top of the blocks and for them to fade out. I would have to make them fade out. I'm not sure which one's gonna be better in terms of performance, but I don't think I care that much. Uh, I'm gonna turn the development off, but I am going to uh, pull the, the draw frame rate here, just so I can see the frame rate. And uh, just to make sure, let's see. Just make sure I have a decent frame rate. Let's see. It's really fast. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a, a decent. Uh, I lag out for like one frame for a couple frames. But since it's not interactive, I really don't care that the transition is not performant. So, yeah, this thing I really don't care. Review colors. Yeah, this one's pretty pretty needed. I think. Because the colors were really random. It's kind of funny because uh, if you watch the... the I, I, don't, I don't remember which one is it, but it's pretty early on. Like, here we already have some interesting colors. These colors were like accidentally chosen. And it was, those are pretty random. And even for the trailer, like for the this image here, this image, see that I changed the colors to make them more interesting? Pretty sure I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Pretty sure. Let's see. In the levels, I have the colors here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I have the, the, the level colors here. And the block color probably is going to be in the, in the spawner, which is the block block. I really like this function name. When I created it, I was like, oh, I'm not sure I like this function name. Cup block block is kind of weird. But it's really easy to search. And there's a lot of value in that, man. There's a lot of value. When I worked on a larger code base, code base uh, it's, you know, being able to search the functions that you want 
fast is really valuable. So I really like the create block block function. So does it receive a color? How's the color set? Yeah, make a color. It's not K. Yeah, this is hard coded here for the block block. And the other guy is probably set their color. Yeah, so Pong. Pong is pretty nice, I think. So this guy should probably need a little bit more work. This guy, I'm not, I'm not sure. Pong looks great, I think. I really like the colors of Pong. Tetris is also good, I think. Space Invaders I really like as well, so probably this guy. Do, have, do you guys have any suggestions in terms of colors? Let's say I took a print screen. Let's see, I could search for like action color palettes. Let's see if we got a cool color palette. Yeah, something like this, see? But we already have green as the player, it's not gonna change. Hmm, that's pretty cool. But I want like a color palette generator or something. Oh yeah, let's see. It's not in <laughs> order action. Oh, in action in terms of like being used. Uh, okay. Let's search for like. Uh, let's search for like a color palette. I don't know, a hundred color palettes. Let's see. Inspired by digital products. Uh, you just generate one. Yeah, this this is the one I kind of uh, I like going sometimes too. See, these cards are pretty cool. You can try adding those. Which one is uglier? This this is pretty ugly. We have pink. I like kind of like the pink and the yellow. These guys. I don't like the background though. We can try adding green to the background. The player is already green. I'm gonna try this red, these two reds, this red and this red. So it's FA6775. FA6775. Well, you know what? I'm gonna comment this time here. Seven, well, seven. FA6775. Then F52549. F52549. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Well, I like the idea, but not, not very visible, to be honest. Let's try switching them around. Maybe we can just tweak those colors. Yeah, oh my eyes. The color should be darker, really. Let me go to like affinity photo. You know what? I, I, I bought affinity photo thanks to an awesome donation on each IO. So that was that was awesome. I really like I really like the software. You know, I couldn't afford like paying Photoshop anymore. So uh, yeah, it was great being able to to buy affinity. Awesome. Thanks. And if you guys like the content and want to drop me a couple bucks on each IO, I really appreciate it. Here on, let me just show you guys the link. Uh, sorry for the guys watching that later on the stream. Because we I talked about each other like a thousand times. Danzadan.h.io. And you can download the source code for this game to learn and increment and play around. The licenses do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want with the source code. No license. Okay, so I'm gonna start out. I'm gonna start off with this color. Let's see. And I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. Just add a new color here. Okay. Kind of like this. Okay. And uh, let's see. The other color. The other color can be can be a little bit darker. Well, let me try to keep the other color. 
Okay. It's gonna be good, I think. But I think I may actually use that for this lap. I think. I can just try switching them around. Not sure what you guys think. What do you guys think, man? I need some feedback. That's not really my my expertise. <laughs> oh, this looks really ugly. Maybe I shouldn't do like this pink thing. Just for the sake of comparison, let me go back to the colors we had. Maybe all this color tweaking just to make sure that we're happy. Yeah. I I may I I mm. I don't like these colors, so I'm confident about changing them. But uh, but I don't like these colors either. Maybe I can make like a darker color, even for this guy. Like uh, this. Let's see. Okay, I kind of like where this is going. I kind of like where this is going. <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about these colors? I think the back... Uh, I don't know. Is it hard to see? It's probably hard to see. If I put that black and white, it's going to be like impossible to see. Let me add like a hue and saturation filter. Well, it's not that bad. What do I want in terms of like brightness? Yeah, I want a darker. I want like this. Wow. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's try these colors, maybe. Yeah, see? Um, this, this is a nice... Uh, this is a great value. I mean, you can really clearly see the ball, the player, and the, uh, the gameplay object. That's a nice tip for you guys. If you want to see the uh, how clear it is visually, just put it black and white. But uh, does that look good? I mean, we're not going to... Well, I'm trying to make a, a hack. It's going to be something like this. See? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's try these colors. So, this color will be the background. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. This color will be the background. And uh, let's see, this color. I kind of like this color. It's kind of a nice, desaturated color. Let's see. Okay, I think I, I think I, I think I liked it. I think I liked it. What do you guys think? I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Just for the sake of comparison, let's just go back to where it was before. Yeah, this is like this is really ugly. Thank God I changed it. Uh, okay, I think it was a success. I think this this can be the final color for this level. For this level, let me try switching the colors. I think that may be enough. Okay, I kind of liked the orange. Maybe it's a bit too light. This guy's maybe too dark. So let me 
I need to get like a good middle ground for them both. So let me just take out these adjustments here. So this guy, I think I'm gonna try a little bit dark, just a little bit darker. Like this. Well, it wasn't much of a change, was it? Yeah, but I think I'm gonna stay with it. I don't want to lose this high uh, saturation mark, so to speak. Okay. And now for this guy, I think this guy is a bit too dark. Let me try, let me try that. Yeah, I, yeah, this one I think is pretty cool. Okay. Okay. I think this is good to go. With this. Yeah, kind of like it. Maybe, maybe a little bit too strong on the eyes though. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change the uh, colors here. Yeah, I'm gonna make that more of a purple color. So let me just try to increase this color. This is already looking a lot better. It wasn't much of a purple. So let's see. Try, try like this. I kind of prefer the other one, the more bluish one. Yeah, but it may be too saturated, like everything too saturated. Yeah, but but I like this. I kind of like this this one. Kind of loud. Maybe let me try. Let me try. Let's see. Try this color. Let me try this color here. Well, let me switch a little bit more. Something like this here. Okay. Let's see this here. And a little bit darker here. Not that dark, but not that light. Yeah. Something like this. Okay, kind of. Okay, I think I liked it. Yeah. I can just see how it looks, the levels and stuff. Yeah, may maybe I should add a little bit more contrast. Yeah, maybe this guy should be a little bit darker. Let me see. Let me add a curves adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, these are the colors I want. Okay. These are the colors, I think. And this color. Nice. And the other two are good, I suppose. The other three. The other three levels. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's not that hard on the eyes. Oh, crap. Nice. And there's nice variation. This level looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. See, it's not 100% though.
the transition I make. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be hard to debug, but it's not a huge problem. Okay, so we review the colors. I think th those colors will be final now. Let me know if you guys think it's really ugly or really, I don't know, hard on the eyes. And stuff. But I'm not gonna change the trailer, I think. Not that big of a problem. I think I may change the screenshots though. Uh, try making the mountain movement the same despite the screen size. I'm not sure how much of a problem is this. But the basic idea is, well, let me see if F11 toggles full screen. It does. I'm gonna to try to make the same mouse movement to get like from one to the last. You guys will not be able to see this, but if I go full screen, that mouse movement doesn't go all the way there. But I'm gonna not do this. I'm gonna make the configurable thing. What's that? The config. Add the config file. So I'm not going to add the mouse movements. I'm gonna add this the config thing. Okay? So let's add the config file. It's not gonna be that hard, I think. We have the the slow player. We have a speed multiplier. Speed multiplier. Multiplier. And it's only being set, let's see, in the beginning to 0 0.8. Well, no, that's not that's it's not the fair. It's not the same speed multiplier. This is the speed multiplier. Let's see where it's being used. Here, I set that to 0 0.1 if I'm slow. And here, I use it. Is that it? I suppose that's it. So, it's really easy. Really easy. So, what I'm going to do is instead of setting that to 0 0.1, I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.1. Well, uh, let's see, slow speed multiplier. Yeah, I think it's gonna, gonna add those separately. I'm gonna have a full speed multiplier here. Speed multiplier. Which call like mouse sensitivity, right? So instead of like, I'm gonna keep that speed multiplier, and I'm gonna create a mouse sensitivity sensitivity variable. Okay. Mouse sensitivity, yeah. And in let's say the player no. here, I'm gonna add that here. And on the init, when I load, let's see, load, load game, load save game, I'm also going to do the load config stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to set the mouse sensitivity to 1. Let's see if this is working just before we program text file and stuff. And if I change that to 0.1, to be really slow. Oh, but this is the sensitivity, right? So if you make them more sensible. Yeah, this is correct. Or is it inverted? Sensitivity, low sensitivity, yeah. Yeah, this is correct. Okay, now let's Let's see, we have in the OS, in the Win32, we have a uh, save game, write save file and read save file. So I'm going to make a read config file. And right here, I'm going to do the, can you teach me C so I can become a proficient hacker? Hmm, what do you want to hack? How are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna uh, load config. Now sensitivity and right here I'm gonna do the internal void load config. And then I'm going to file uh, OS read config file. And if we got a file, we should uh, we should parse that. Uh, I'm doing amazing. That's awesome, man. Doing amazing is awesome. Do you have a GUI set up for the game? Uh, let me show you the game. The game has a lot of stuff going on. This is the game. We have more than a GUI, we have like particle systems, explosions and menus and animation. And we have like bitmaps and we have packed files, we have audio, we have multi threading, we have a profiler, we have, we have so much stuff, man. And we added everything on stream. So we can watch the whole thing. You may be able to learn C by just watching that. I also have a, a beginner C guide on my YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Dan. So that should be awesome to get started. OMG, this is amazing. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. And we have like Space Invaders breakout as well. Maybe I'm excited to learn programming. Dude, you should really learn programming. Programming is awesome. You know, when I first started making games, I wasn't a programmer. I, I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't tell you guys that. Because there's a little bit of story before I started doing that game that I showed you guys earlier. And the story is, I worked uh, on a lot, a, lot of, a, a lot of people's project online as a 3D artist. So I wasn't a programmer, I didn't know how to program, I, I didn't really care much about that. I wanted to make games and I was like, okay, to make games I need to learn how to program. So I learned that kind of a, because I need it. But then I fell in love with it. You should really learn, man. There are there are a lot of like very beginner C++ things on uh, YouTube and stuff. I suggest that you watch a super beginner one. And after you know, have like you know what a variable and a function is, you can watch my tutorial series. I'm doing like, like a game tutorial series in C++ for beginners. It's not like a hundred percent beginner, but it's for pretty pretty beginners. And you can watch that on a. Uh, do, do you recommend Python or something else? I would recommend that you learn C first. It's kind of a bit unusual nowadays, but. Uh, C is the only language that really stood the test of time. Really, I mean, people improved it, people changed it, people made better languages in different languages and slightly better languages. People tried all sorts of different stuff. And no one could beat C because it's really simple. Because it really gets the job done and it's really powerful. And you want a simple thing because you are learning, but you also want something that you should be able to really invest your time in. The thing about Python and these things, they're really dependent on libraries and libraries are arbitrary. No, you're gonna learn how to use a library. And that's what I did for, for like three years. I learned how to use libraries. And it sucked because you, do, you don't really learn how to program. But, but when I stopped and learned how, how to program, in one year, I could program like a lot of stuff. And then I programmed like web portal. I programmed, I already did like a, a web server in C. I already did all sorts of crazy stuff. Like I did web, I did enterprise software, I did RPA, I did all sorts of crazy stuff. Why? Because I focused on learning how to program. And if I, if I continue that path of learning how to use libraries, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I, I wouldn't suggest a very library-focused thing. That's why this tutorial is pretty cool, because it's from scratch, making a game from scratch in C++. Yeah, and, and uh, watch, a, watch a very simple C tutorial on YouTube, like what's a variable, what's a function, and things like that. And then you can watch the story. If it's hard to follow along, let me know and I'll, I can answer your questions. I do want to make a very... A beginner like us uh, I've never programmed in my life tutorial series kind of a tutorial series <laughs> uh, for absolute beginners that's the, that's the word for absolute beginners but uh, I think I'm gonna do that maybe in the end of the year I, when I finish this game and stuff uh, because it's a lot of work it's hard to make it right I really want to make it right but then it'll be the whole process man all the way to more advanced stuff like we're doing now we do some pretty cool stuff I mean not fully advanced but somewhat advanced Let's finish this config file thing. Uh, OS read config file. It's in the platform common. Uh, OS read config file. 
Oh yeah, we're about to spec the file. Let's spec the file. Uh, I'm gonna add that in the raw thing. I'm gonna something like config.txt for people to know that they can edit. We're gonna do something like mouse sensitivity. Sensitivity equals 1.0. Does that look good to you? Does that look like a nice interface for users? I don't think it, I don't know if there's anything else you want to. Well, we could do like a windowed true. That's really <laughs> windowed. I really didn't expect to do this kind of stuff <laughs> on stream, but that'll be cool. Try a small parse, parser. Okay, let's let's make a config. Uh, config. That's really unexpected, but let's do that, man. I like unexpected stuff. Config.c. So, uh, if we have a file, we're gonna do something like get next keyword keyword equal get next keyword you can pass like the file as a pointer and then uh, if it's gonna be really hard coded because it's a very simple thing if the uh, if the keyword let's do strings match we have strings match I don't think we do. No, we don't have any string functions. We're going to have to add a couple string functions. A strings match keyword and, uh, well, let me add a mouse sensitivity string equals mouse sensitivity And well, let's, let's do it by hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 characters long in our stream. And let's also do a windowed. Windowed stream. So we can probably read that before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Windowed. Uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 characters. So if we find the mouse sensitivity string, I'm gonna do like a parse float value. Let's say value. Parse float value. File. And then I'm gonna do the let's see if value is I'm gonna set the mouse sensitivity to a clamp path. See the minimum is like 0.1. And let's say the well let's do 0 0.1. No, it's gonna be 0.1. And let's say the maximum is 10. And this is the value. Okay. So we're gonna need these. Oh, and the same thing will be for like strings match keyword uh, windowed string. And then we're gonna parse a bold value parse bold value and then we're gonna set the window to the value okay let's see if we manage to do get in a reasonable amount of time uh, string keyword get next keyword we need the get next keyword Yeah, call that string. We need the 
parse float value and the parse are we using I don't think we are using any libraries for uh, like sprintf and stuff so I think I'm gonna have to write that by hand just because I don't want to add a library just for this it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to try a float parser okay and parse go value that's what we want this returns a pull this returns a float and here in the string we're gonna have a internal void strings match string b let's have a strings match if a dot size b dot size turn false this is actually a b32 uh, okay so for well, let's, let's do the at a equals a dot data same thing for b hopefully people outside is not making a lot of noise for you guys okay, there's a lot of noisy people outside here Uh, let's see a dot size a plus plus I plus plus I mean so if at a at a is different from at B I'm going to return false if it's not different I'm just going to increment them both and it's going to return true it should be good to go. Now, we don't have a window. So I'm just going to do like if if value uh, OS toggle full screen. Toggle OS call. Oh, I need to pass the window. Mm. So I'm going to make the window variable global. Yeah. So, uh, window to window. Go back to like window handle to a window handle to a window. Let's see here instead of thirty two window to this, and then we're going to toggle the full screen if I'm not in development. I can toggle that back if I am. Uh, that from common, I can toggle that back. Internal void. Okay. So uh, from int. So I suppose it's the other way around. It's data and size. It is same thing here. Well, it's gonna be a cool challenge. To have small parser here. Can I convert from void to string? Yeah, get next keyword is gonna give you what the keyword? Yeah, it's gonna give the keyword ending and advance the pointer. Window undeclared because now it's 30 32 window. Window to window. Let's see. No, yes, no. Yes, 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 no, yes. Window, this is the uh, Win32 window. Again, Win32 window. Dude, I I can't imagine programming. Well, I can't because I did that a lot. But imagine uh, programming in a, in a some language that's not strongly typed. Ah. Uh, you really become afraid of the code, right? So, result. So, 
we have to program these functions, these parsing functions. Okay? So, uh, after two value equals 1.f, which is salt, and after two value false of result. Result is not going to be windowed by default. False. Return result. Okay. Re result. Okay. Uh, B32 equals false. Okay. So let's let's do the next get next keyword. What we are going to do, first of all, we're going to eat white space. So eat white spaces. And then we're gonna like uh, result get next word. Well, we should really just do the get get next word thing. Hmm. Yeah, let, let's do it like this. I don't know. It's kind of a maybe unnecessary abstraction, so to speak. So we got that next keyword. Um, we can probably do something like consume. Consume next keyword and then consume next word. So we should be here and then that's it. Return result. Okay. So we're gonna have to do the internal string consume next word. String point. So the idea is I'm just going to oh we probably do, it's gonna be easier. Internal probably do the eat white spaces thing and uh, well six to four i equals zero well uh, it's not gonna be the best parser in the world size i plus plus but it'll do the trick at oops people are talking to me let me not care about it for now as data uh, at plus plus, okay. So if uh, at is different from this and or or and right and at is different from this and well, let's do a couple, right? If it's different from this, you can return return true. Well, no, not return true. We have to consume. Okay, so if it's different, we just return. If it's not different, we should set the data plus plus and set the size minus minus. Perfect. And uh, we don't need this add guy now. And instead of at, we can just set the data. So at will be s data. Illegal operand has type char. If it's different from everything, we ate all the white space. Yeah, this looks okay. Get next keyword. Saying something is illegal here. I don't know what. Let's try this out in this one. Okay, this is correct. And this is correct. Oh, yeah, I'm missing this one. Which editor is this? I'm only using Visual Studio. This is Forcoder. Forcoder is a great editor. You can uh, download the demo version for free on each I.O. Try for coder. Yeah. 
here. You can download that, you can buy the full customizable version. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. I, I haven't customized it yet, but you can uh, download the demo, which, which is the one I'm using here. This is version uh, 4.0.28. Uh, I really like this version. Because the other version, that I, I really want to customize that. I, the thing I like the most, like the, it's really fast, really reliable, and has like awesome virtual white spacing. So I don't really ever have to care about virtual about uh, white spacing. Consume next keyword. Consume next word. Okay. So we finished the eat white space. Not sure it's working though. But when we consume a next word, it's basically the same thing here. But it's as soon as we find a white space, we exit. And we're going to have to do a string result x equals s. Return s. And uh, if we are equal to this or are equal to this or if, so if you see any white space if you see any white space we return result okay and the result will start out here but the size will be zero and right here I'm gonna set the result dot size plus plus and I'm also going to uh, remove is that right? Just remove the yeah I think this is right. Now return a string pointer result. Okay. How do you use multiplies in C plus plus and just multiple or different classes? Uh, see uh, this is not entirely correct. You can use files however you want in C++. In fact, you can you can create a class class A and a class B in the same C++ file. It's really uh, does, doesn't have anything to do with classes files the way it's organized. You can do whatever you want. You can do the whole program in one file in C++. You can. Uh, I'm gonna draw really quickly, but if you want to learn more, I have a tutorial on how C++ compilation works. You can watch that on my YouTube channel, which is a uh, uh, Unity builds. C++ compilation explained. What are Unity builds? You can go to to the YouTube channel Dan Zay Dan on YouTube. The basic idea is when we when we compile a file. So right now we're passing to the CL, which is the compile command, uh, the Win32 platform.c. When you create a Visual Studio project, and you can watch that on this tutorial series, the, the C++ for beginners. Well, in this case, we use C++, so you can watch and uh, understand exactly how you can compile or not compile in this series. Uh, when you create a new file here, it automatically gets added here. So like new file. And the way it works is each file is compiled separately into an object file which is pretty much a compiled, but there's a few missing things in this file. And, and so you have a bunch of OBJ files. So this is the normal compilation. And then they are linked together into the executable. What's inside an OBJ file is arbitrary. And the way one, uh, one file uh, looks into the other file is through header files. Because they need the function prototype. This is what we're doing here. It needs the function prototypes but not the declaration because you can't declare twice in the same uh, linking phase. But you do have to, you to need the, the every compilation unit, which is separate, to see everyone's you know uh, prototypes. So we need the H file for that. So this is the normal thing. You can do however you want. You can have like two classes per file. You can do however you, you don't have a rule for that. It's not specified in C++. So the way we're doing now in C, which is the same way I do in this tutorial, so you can do that in C++, it's way better. In, fa in fact, Hamid Hero also does that, uh, also does this, which is a Unity build. And you can watch that video for more info, but the idea is, instead of doing several OBJ files, we, we include all our C or C++ files into one giant .c file, 
and then send this guy to the to the compiler and then it gets linked to the executable so if you, if you see here in our uh, thing here uh, in our build we are only asking it to compile one file because in this file we are including all the other files and I think the game is also including one of the ones, yeah. yeah. So this is the way we are doing, this is a unit build, it's way better, it's way easier because you don't need like tons of header files, so you spend like a lot of time typing the same thing every time, it sucks, really sucks. Uh, right now it's just a CC, uh, I think, was, I don't know if you saw the beginning of the config file, all we did was like begin a file, config, add it here, add it uh, here to the game, config, and then this like this is the same thing as if we were writing this thing in this file. So it's like we're doing like one huge file, but we just break for convenience. So this is convenient to be separate because I have like parsing stuff here, and I don't want to clutter the game with that. So yeah. Uh, so arbitrary, arbitrary is the way that I split files. The way I think it's easier. So I think this is correct. I'm gonna have to debug that. Uh, and the parse float value, I'm going to have to, I'm going to parse, uh, I'm going to parse one keyword, and you know what, uh, I'm, I'm going to remove this keyword thing, it's going to be the same thing, so I'm going to eat white spaces, I'm going to then In white space here and here as well. And no need for this guy. So this is the basic idea. So the parse float for now, all I'm gonna do is read two words. So, so I'm gonna consume next keyword uh, s two words. Okay. And strings not identified it's s same thing here let's see mess oh it's just work assume next word okay now do you guys think that we're gonna get that working for the first time or not. So, file. Oh, I should probably turn off the optimizations so we can uh, debug properly. Let's see our file. Looks correct. We have our strings. So, consume next. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me increase the font size a little bit. So, consume next keyword. So, I'm gonna eat the white spaces. Let's see. Let's see the data here. Well, this is wrong, I suppose. Why is the data one? This is a text file. It's funny. We read, we read forty-four k, which looks about right. Oh no, this is wrong. Uh, we're probably reading the wrong file. We are probably... Yeah, we're reading the save file. Config. Job. TXT. Okay. Okay, now we read a... F we don't read a file. Config.txt. Because we misheld it. Let's go, let's see. So we didn't get that in the first try. <laughs> Eat white spaces. So S, this is our file. Perfect. Mouse sensitivity one, window to false. Let's see. We don't have white space, so we exit right off the bat. And then uh, we copy the result. So now we're consuming the next word, right? Okay, so. So we increase the size here and the result. Let's see the result. It's this guy, and now it's one. This is gonna work great, I think. One, two, 
Yeah, I'm gonna add a breakpoint here or here. Let's see which one's come first. Okay, so we find a white space. This would be called if we found the end of the file. So we don't need to, to so we don't need to eat the white spaces, but who cares? Probably not gonna find the end of the file. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna eat the white spaces. Perfect. And have 17 mouse sensitivity. So we should be able to match the strings, and we do, so that's working. We're not parsing the float yet, so we should uh, we should just get one here, which we do. So mass sensitivity will still be one. Well, I don't know if we if we uh, okay. We should loop through that. Hmm, so, small problem. We just read one keyword. So I'm gonna have to do like while. While we have a file size. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna remove all those breakpoints. Okay, so we read one word, we read the other word. But we don't have a match. This is this is wrong. Uh, let's see. We read a keyword, small sensitivity. Then we parse everything, and the file is backslash windowed. Okay. So we consume the next keyword. The keywords oh it's backslash. So before the consume next keyword. It's funny. Oh, we didn't change that backslash r, backslash n, and backslash t. That, those were the ones I meant to add. What are your thoughts on allocating more memory than you know you will need? Let's say you want you won't need 30, so allocate 40 and then delete the unused addresses. Not ideal for memory intensive stuff, but for simple things. Um sorry you'll need 30. Yeah, I got what you mean. And you allocate 40. When you're developing the project, you should really allocate a lot more than you need. But you should be able to track that. In this game, since we're not allocating memory at all, except when we read a file, which is like three times in the entire game, and we don't even free it. We don't really care. It's like a, four, a 40 megabyte, 40 kilobyte file and a 4 megabyte file. The, the biggest one is 4 megabytes. Those are the only ones that we allocate. So we don't care about that in this game. In a bigger project, you probably you need an allocator. So we probably have a memory arena that have a huge amount of memory. Like let's say you have 500 megabytes for the for the development, so, and then you keep track of the memory. So you'll know uh, on each level uses how much memory you use and things like that. I'm parsing a string, stream allocating the memory just by looking into the. <laughs> yeah, in this case. If you don't, if you know how, me, how much memory you need, like you'll need 30 to allocate 40. Uh, if you know, like if you're reading a file, like in this case here, we know how much memory because we, we get the file size here. So we know how much memory we need, so we just allocate that file size. And uh, oh, we are actually allocating in other cases. So we're allocating the in the audio and the pixels. So we do allocate a lot of memory. But in all cases, we know exactly how much we need. In this case, we allocate the number of samples we need, which is like one seconds or two seconds worth. I don't remember. And the pixels is the size of the screen. So when its size changes, we free the memory and we allocate that. So this is correct. I forgot about that. But we did we did uh, the the file thing the first day, day one, the uh, the video thing on day one. Uh, but if you don't know how much memory you have, you usually allocate a big block, and then you have an allocator for that, like a stack allocator or things like that. Did you make that class? Or is this, no, everything is made from scratch, man. Uh, you can watch the whole thing uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Everything was made on live stream. Everything. You can watch the whole thing. And uh, right now, we're writing the parser for the config file, and that wasn't planned. 
since we were doing like small things, he was like, oh, it would be nice to add a config file. So I, we were parsing that. And uh, it's pretty easy. We're not, we're not allocating any memory at all, except for reading the file. Gotcha. I mean, C++ was the first time in four years and haven't got, and I've forgotten so much. Yeah, C++ does changes a lot. Uh, C++ does, does change, I suppose, which is the correct way of saying. But we're not allocating anything here in the parser. We have the memory and we're just pointing at the things that we want, like we increment the pointers and subtract things like that. So, uh, yeah, we found a bug on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, on the sizing. Yeah, so this is correct. Now our keyword is windowed, so we read windowed, the files will be, it's going to be two, so we read a keyword, which is like, yeah, it's kind of weird, the consume next keyword. Not a hundred percent. Let's see. I'm not sure. We got window, and then we parsed file, and the end was S E over false. That's funny. I thought we consumed two words here. So. The value is equals false, so now the value should be false. It is false. And we consume the next keyword. Let's see, so we eat white spaces, no difference. So we go ahead. Um, what did we find? What did we find? Did we... Oh, because we are decrementing the size here. Mm. Okay, this is wrong. Since we are decrementing the size, we don't need to increment i. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, this is a really bad parser. It's not really organized. But uh, since we're just doing this for crazy fun, and uh, and it's not meant to be like production ready parser and stuff, just for the configs. Who cares if it's it's not working or, or something like that? Well, windowed, now the keyword, the file should be equal to zero, perfect. So now it's working. All I have to do is to read uh, bulls and floats. Bulls will be easy. Bulls, not bulls. So we have a string, let's say true, because that's the one that we care if it's windowed or not. True string. It's going to be equal to true. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. And four character long. If strings match, uh, if, if the value and the true string matches, then we return true as we return false. I can do like this. So now, if everything is working, we should launch. Well, we should, uh, or we should, we should be windowed because we are in the development build, right? But if I set it to true, I'm gonna toggle. So it should be full screen. And it's not. So, something's wrong. Let's see what's wrong. True string is true. Our val is false. What? Did I not save it? Why is the value false? This is weird. Oh, because I have two config files. Okay. Because I renamed it when it was opened. Okay. Let's see if it's... Oh, it's full screen. Awesome. Oh, that was really weird. Oh, because we are... Since we are on a debug build, we're really we're running really slowly. <laughs> so it's going all over the place. All over the place. So let, let me go to an optimized 
non-developer build and let's go back to the game and let's remove the IPS counter, we don't need that anymore. So now we should be windowed. And now we should be full screen. Awesome! We, we implemented a config file and a parser. That was awesome in like 40 minutes. <laughs> What does the internal keyword do? The internal is just static. Uh, let me show you guys. Here. Since uh, since everything is one compilation unit or translation unit, uh, we don't need to export everything outside the translation unit. So adding a static keyword is a great optimization, meaning that it's internal for this compilation file. So yeah, the compiler, the compiler can optimize that in terms of like generating the OBJ and linking. Although I don't remember what happens, it was something like two or three streams ago, something happened that we got really slow in the compiler compiler time. But I, I, I don't know. But yeah, this keyword just for, for cleaning up. So that was awesome, man, adding these, uh, this config file. We have to parse the float though. Uh, oh, thank you, I thought. I was like, what? Well, this is a common practice to rename static. Well, I, I didn't invent that, so uh, I learned that from a Casey Muratori. Uh, so it's not it's not that uncommon because static means three different things really. We should really add like local persist. When you are inside a function, a, a static means that this variable will persist locally. If you add that in the global scope, static means that it'll be a global variable. And if you add that to a function, it means that it's internal to the compilation unit. So it means three different things. Yeah, so uh, White Wolf Vern is right. Because static means a lot of different stuff, it's a, a nice practice to rename it, to know exactly what you mean by static. And it's also great to search, right? If I search for like global variable, I know how many I have in my program. Because if I search for static, and every function is static, I'd have like tons of static and I wouldn't know if that's a global variable or a function so I go have to go line by line so yeah dude it was so awesome to implement this config file I don't know I don't know if uh, let me see if uh, V Zamorel is still here because he suggested it I don't know if we got to see the implementation but that was really cool it's like not even a hundred lines but let's implement the the parse float really easily here so this is the float string okay so I'm gonna go character by character and I have like uh, after each result equals zero so I'm gonna go character by character in this guy I uh, less than float string dot size okay I plus plus mm -hmm. okay so uh, well, if float string dot data, well, yeah, I. I'm gonna do it like this. It's not the best thing, but it's gonna be so quick that nobody, nobody's gonna care. It's a super small file to parse. It's not like a full production parser. It's just, just a small config thing for fun. It'd be nice. And I'm gonna, gonna have to test for errors too. Like, what if the file is missing? Everything should be working, but what if we mistype and things like that? So, um,. Well, I'm gonna add like parse. I'm gonna add like value. So float data. Let's see. Um, if this guy is greater to or equal to zero, and this guy is greater to or equal to nine. This is a digit, right? So we can do like uh, digit will be this guy uh, minus zero. Okay, so that's the digit. And then I'm gonna do like value plus equals, well, times equals 10. And then value, uh, Plus the digit. Okay, so we should be able to parse ints for now. And we're gonna make sure that this works. 
Okay, and I'm gonna add this else here. Like return one. Just because it's unknown. Because we're, gonna, we're gonna have to add the dot here. Let's see if we get the we three parts one. Well, one is too boring. Let's do like one, two, three. Oops. Let's uh let's go back to building the unoptimized development build. Okay. Now the float string is one, two, three. Perfect. Now we should be able to get one, so value is gonna be one. Next time I'm gonna get two, so the value is gonna be twelve. And the next time I'm gonna get three, and the value is gonna be one, two, three. <laughs> That's it, man. We parsed the we parsed an integer. Oh, we didn't change the. Yeah, I'm gonna set the result here. So. Yeah. So one, two, three, perfect. Instead of value, it's result. Oops. Uh, result. Result. Perfect. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, now we should add the dot. Uh, let's see, one, two, dot, three, two. Let's try parsing that. Uh, well, we should also try, uh, before we do that, let's do leading zeros. Because this, I'm not sure this is gonna work. We find zero, so we add zero. Next one, we find one, so we add one. So, yeah, we've got 12. Huh, leading zeros, we got that for free. Okay. Now, we're gonna have to do, let's try 1.2 for now. And the thing is, if we find a one, a uh, point, I mean, if this guy is a dot, we should also add a comma because in places like Brazil, People specify decimal with a comma and a point, and we don't really care either way. So if that's the case, if we found a pointer, instead of, yeah, I'm going to add something like uh, decimal equals like zero. Okay, and if decimal equals zero, I'm gonna add this else. Well, if I don't have a decimal, this is how I'll process the number. If I do have a decimal, if I do have a decimal, I'm going to, it's gonna be a uh, result plus, equals F32 digit divided by the decimal plus plus that's it I suppose return uh, yeah yeah I think well I'm not sure it's gonna work but who knows Digit. We found we find one, so we add that. That's one. Uh, we find point, so decimal is now one. We find two, and we got one decimal, so we're going to add two divided by one. Oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. It's not two divided by one. This is not. This is divided by. Uh, well, ten. 10 to the power of the decimal. So instead of saving the decimal, well, I can save the decimal, all right. So I'm gonna actually do this guy equals 10. And then I'm gonna do decimal times equals 10. Okay. Okay, let's see. So the result Perfect, 1.2. This 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.005 here is because of full precision. So we read 1.2 successfully. And now it should be we should be more sensitive. Let's see if this works. 
<laughs> oh man, we got really lucky with things working nicely today. Let's see. That's at 10 point, well, that's at 5.2. We should be really sensitive. And we are. Let's add 0 0.2. And I'm not sure if 0 0.2 is going to work. So just for the, ah, uh, let's see. Oh, we can print that. Yeah, let's print that. Uh, print f32 result. Yeah, let's see if we parse that correctly. Perfect. So that's it. 2.123, 2.12. We only print two decimals. Let's do 62. This guy, perfect. Let's try this number. Oh, I don't think we have. No, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 2.0, okay. Print zero one. So this one, I don't think we managed to get working correctly. But I don't think we care, honestly. If we do something like this, or maybe we did work. Yeah, for point eleven because of float precision. Uh, yeah. Let's see, zero point two. That's zero point two. Yeah, we are working. See, but we're not precise. And our printing is not perfect either way. So I don't know, <laughs> dude. I really want to make a programming language. I already did like small scripting uh, thing just for fun to compile to see, because it's really awesome, man, to do a parsing thing. It's awesome. It was really easy. So now we make a config file with options for bool and float in uh, 90 lines of code and in another, I'd say one hour. Let's say we did like that in one hour. That was super, super easy, man. That was so easy, and that was really awesome as well. It, was, it would be nice of value to have like a parser thing. So instead of config.c, I think I'm going to rename this file, just to make it clear, like config file parser, just so people can uh, see what's going to expect from this file. Config file parser, and in the game, it's going to be config file parser. Awesome. Uh, let's just see what happens if we don't find a config file. Let's see if we explode. We should be good to go, to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, everything's still perfect. Let's see if we find a config file with problematic information. Uh, everything is still perfect. And uh, let's make a uh, full screen. This will toggle the window, so we need a full screen. Yeah, so we couldn't read this guy, but we read, we read this guy, sensitivity. Let's add like bogus information here. Oh, let me go back to not because you guys to see. So if you read like bad numbers, uh, it still works perfectly. Same thing here, We're gonna be windowed. If we read stuff like this, we have to read true to get full screen. Perfect. Uh, let's see if we have like extra things here and here and here. Perfect. It is perfect. Oh, let's try it like 10 and yeah, let's try 10. Perfect. Super fast. People are trying, people are going to break this for sure, but that's fun. And true. Yeah, perfect. Oh man, that was so cool. Thanks a lot for that suggestion, man. It was really fun to add program this. Thanks a lot, really. That was really, really cool. So our config file is done. Done, done, done. Let's add, let's add more stuff today. I'm kind of getting tired, but I think we can do some more stuff. The problem when comment hits strong blocks, it's the game over. Let's see. Well, let's first of all remove that print, the config file. And then let's go to the level and then let's do the block, block. And then it makes, let's make every block. Let's make every block. How I don't remember. Yeah, power block. Maybe power block, power down, power slow player. 
Yeah, it's actually strong blocks. Yeah. Let's see what happens. It, it, the bug said problem when comet hits strong blocks. So hmm, this kind of sucks. I, I kind of need to make comet and strong blocks. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we've got a comet and that's strong blocks. Let's see, comet works nicely, strong blocks. I don't know, man. Instant game over. Ah! We got an instant game over. But that was only when the comet was going up. So let's see, yeah, that's weird. Lose life, let's go to lose life. Why do we lose a life? Who thinks we lost life? Update balls. So, if the ball reached the end of the arena? Ball desired PY minus 36. Ball half size 30, 23? So, we got a, yeah, so we got a huge ball. That's why we think we got the end of the arena. The question is why you got a huge ball? Uh, ball half size so we have increased ball size spawn triple shot do ball block collision yeah so this is the thing this is the problem when we do a uh, a ball block collision. Let's see when I research for strong blocks. Well, we don't search it here. When we hit a block, where's this? This is the update box. When we hit a block and we're not strong blocks, we lose a life. This is weird. Where does it say? Where are we using the strong blocks? Strong blocks, DT. Uh, okay, yeah, so this is the thing. So when we hit a block here, we already did the do block collision test, did we not? Yeah. So if we hit the block, yeah, I'm going to have to change the do block collision test. Collision test. Now I can't find it. What is it called? Oh, it's not test, it's just block collision. Uh, let's see, I increase the size. I don't increase the size. I'm really confused. Let's see who increases the size. Increase ball size, I suppose. Let's see. Okay, we increase the ball size. It's going to be hard to play. 
yeah, it's gonna be kind of impossible to play. Let me search for that. So, we increase the ball size, player collision with ball. Ball with the wall, 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 here. So this is the problem. Let me just see where it changed. So this is the problem. Um, if I hit the block, I, I'm not going to increase the ball size. Only if this guy is the case. Oh, I need the old size. So. Update ball axis. Yeah, let me see. Just by not increasing the ball size, this work. I don't think this will gonna work because I think the collision is still happening. I think it's right on top of the. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so now we're infinite looping for some reason. Hit a block. Well, uh, all we do is not increase the ball size. Are we really infinite looping though? Oh, because we have movement left. Okay. It's weird. Just by doing this. Oh, I suppose we were. Yeah. If we didn't. If we didn't lose the game, we would need to loop. I suppose. Yeah. Min T does not move like the ball the ball is already inside the block. Hmm. I'm trying to do a sweep bath. Yeah, this is only valid. I don't know. I may cheat here instead of the ball movement left. Uh, I don't know if Strong blocks. I'm gonna cheat that for now. Greater than zero. Just to see the result and understand a little, a little bit better the system. We need. Yeah, to have Okay. Okay, so. We have to change the ball direction. Why is the ball direction not changing? Here. Ball update axis. It's one or zero invalid code path. Off topic. Uh, did you try Rust Lang? I'm using it for a while for the series, but uh, bearing the for loop, they still don't see much gain for use for games. The speed of optimization seems to see, but the bug is really, really slow on my machine. Yeah, uh, I haven't tried Rust, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. But I'm not very interested in Rust for the reason that a compiler that tries to outsmart the programmer is not very useful, in my opinion. Uh, I want a compiler to be a helpful tool, so don't take me, don't take me wrong in this, in this case. But it should be a tool. It shouldn't tell you that this code is wrong and you shouldn't compile it, even if this code makes sense, right? So that's my problem with Rust. I, I don't like a compiler that rejects code just because it doesn't follow his standard of correctness that's my problem so so that's why I don't go into rust very much and uh, a lot of people have a lot of problems with that but I don't uh, I don't have a lot of problems by having a compiler 
by having a, I don't know, wrong code in this sense. So maybe it's not, not for me, I suppose. But uh, if the build, it's probably going to be a lot slower compiling Rust. Uh, not sure a lot slower than C++ because C++ is already slower. But since it's going to do a lot of compile time check on our code, it is going to be slower. And uh, I don't know, I really like fast builds. I think this build is slow enough. I mean, it takes like almost a second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, why is the ball update axis here? If the ball update is going to be the sweep, path y, so one is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ball update axis. I'm going to set that to the opposite of that in case we are here. So we should go, I'm going to add this anyways, but we should go now to the opposite direction. So that was the problem. What? It didn't change directions. Why didn't it change directions? The strong blocks is less. Yeah, no, it should be really greater than zero. Ah, come on, man. We should really change direction only if we are a comet. Because comet, for some reason... Let's see. I'm gonna put a breakpoint... I'm gonna... I'm gonna put a breakpoint... Uh, Let's see here. Oh, let's see here. Here. Let's see. So if we hit the if we hit the, the block with the strong block, let's see. Well, that's not what I want. I want the strong block first. Okay. So the update axis is 1. So if we don't have a comment, we reverse. But if we have a strong block, ah, this is perfect. Like, has strong block. False. But if we have a strong block, yes. and you know what, we can go back down here. Because the problem was this. The problem was this. I'm confident that this will solve the problem. Let's see. Well, let me try some random things. So, random comment looks good. Comment with a strong block. Yeah, the sound is crashing. We have to take a look at that. Probably today. But, uh... I'm gonna change the way sound is processed a bit. Let's see, strong block looks good. Oh, but now we can't. Now we can't get the comment. We should, should have we have to get a strong uh strong blocks and then a comment immediately. Let's see. Yeah, see, this is perfect. This is what we want. Awesome. Let's see if we still have the correct comment behavior. We do. We do. And let's see if we have this the correct strong block behavior without the comment. And I think we do as well. Yeah. Nice. So we solved this bug. We solved this bug. Let's let's do the audio thing because it would be good because I'll be able to to uh, to test that uh, before last stream uh, next streams. Yeah, I can see that point. I'm just trying now because of the hype. For now, the compiler times are actually good. It's like a slow slower than C, but I think it's it's because I'm using Windows API. It's no dependencies. 
a compiler ROS program that takes 15 minutes to compile with a compiler ROS program that takes 15 minutes to compile with 200 dependencies 200 lines of code by the way really oh man that's territory I, I really don't want to thread so to speak <laughs> because I mean but I don't know 200 dependencies sounds like a lot right an open source tool Ah, okay. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, because when you start talking about like really long to compile times, oh man, I, I programmed like a game uh, using the Unreal C++ stuff. And uh, it takes a long time to compile, even with incremental builds, even with like DLL optimizations and stuff. And uh, it, I don't know, it, I, hate, I hate programming like this. And I hate programming if I hate programming, right? So I don't want to hate programming because I love programming. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, man. Speaking of friction, that's a huge friction. So I don't know if that's a problem with Rust or the problem with the way it's structured because, I mean, Unreal takes a lot longer than that to compile, right? So I'm not taking, uh, not bashing Rust for that. I'm bashing long compile times. But uh, yeah, the thing is that the thing about Rust for me is the compiler. Uh, rejecting code that I want to write. If I want to write that code, if I make a mistake in terms of like the parsing and the laxing and, and the semantics and stuff, okay, yeah, sure, but don't ar ar don't add arbitrary stuff. Like, programming is hard enough without limiting the programmer. And that's why I don't like higher level languages as well. Programming is hard without limiting the programmer. That's kind of a, a nice statement. So you, you should limit the programmer. So let him do uh, let him do this thing. So we finish this bug, make the play spring tighter, make the fail and win more evident. I think we're gonna do these next time. Oh, our assertions on the release build. I think we're gonna do this just before we do the uh, the audio thing. Um, just bef just before we do the audio thing, we're gonna do the asserts. Because I think the asserts are in the release build, and that sucks. So I'm gonna assert zero, and we are on the development, so we should assert. We should, yeah, we do assert. Nice. But if we go to the non development, we shouldn't assert. But the problem is, yeah, see, we do assert. And the problem is, somewhere, we use like two libraries, one for PNG and one for OGG files. One of them, or two of, of them both, include assert.h. And assert.h, for some reason, well, they include assert.h despite this, distinct, this distinction. And I don't want to mess around with this. All I want is I want to have control over assert myself. So what I really want to do is something like this. If uh, development uh, include assert.h right and if you're not I want to assert nothing but this is still going to be problematic because they include assert.h even if you're not development so let's see dot h this file is I wrote so it doesn't include anything uh, image yeah assert you can define, yeah, see, you can define a, uh, STB assert before uh, uh, assert.h. So assert.h, so it's exactly what we want. So we define STB assert. That's, that's the only thing we need. So we define STB assert to be assert. That's in STB image. Uh, let's see, where is that image importer? Here. So we define stdi assert to be assert. Perfect. But I think the OGG reader doesn't do this. If I'm not mistaken. See? It doesn't. So I'm just going to remove that. <laughs> hey! What is a function pointer and what it is used for? Dude, that's a really random question. 
a function a, a function pointer is just a variable that points to a memory address of a function. If you want to know more about pointers, I'm going to link to my pointer video, which is pretty useful. Uh, because if you know what a pointer is, a function pointer is kind of obvious. Uh, okay. So that's the video. So watch that video, and after that, understand this. And you can watch this later on in the pod. Uh, a, a function exists in memory, right? So you can hold a pointer to that as well. And if you do hold a pointer, what can it be used for? Well, the most useful thing is by creating virtual functions, like C++, right? You have a virtual table. That links like call this function, which function? I don't know, depends. Depends on what. So you can set that function pointer to point at different functions based on what criteria you want. Like I have an update monster thing and I call the update function for the monster, which is a function pointer variable inside the monster, right? Uh, if the monster is work, I call this function. So I set the function pointer to point at a different function, right? So this is the basic use for function pointers. It's also useful for loading DLLs. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not using this in this case, but if you if you have to open a DLL, you can get the function address by doing the get proc address function in Windows. So you get the function pointer to the DLL, and then you can just call the function with the function pointer. That's another very common use as well. And the last common use is to build like an API and pass that uh, th through uh, DLL barriers and stuff. And that's also useful. Okay, so I think we shouldn't be able, we shouldn't crash now, and we don't. Perfect. Uh, so that was the problem. Our libraries use see this library. The other ones you could. Uh, this is perfect, but this library for some reason, even though it was Sean Barrett that wrote both of them, for some reason this library doesn't have this nice interface. So it just uses a search directly. See, but that was easy enough to change. And if you have like two hundred, oh, uh, no problem, man. If you have 200 dependencies, <laughs> like White, White Wolfram <laughs> uh, commented, and you have to worry about 200 possibilities of people including things that you don't want to include in your code, right? That's why you should, you should really consciously use uh, libraries and stuff. So that was it. Now, if I, if I remove, now let's go back to the build.dat, go back to the development build. I can do optimize here for now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, now I assert. But now I should be able to remove the assert. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's in the game. Yeah. So now we should be back to normal. And asserts will not trigger when the players are in the game because they shouldn't. Nice. Uh, sound crash, yeah. So I think I'm gonna, the last thing for today, I am going to work on the, get the mouse, not the app. Reappear, reappear, reappear. Yeah, I think it's spelled like this. So I'm gonna take a, a small look at the audio thing. Okay. And I'm probably going to do like one more, one more polish stream and then we can finish the game. I think that would be good. We can do like just play test more, like especially Tetris. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Uh, okay. So the sound crashed. We, we could have debugged at that point, to be honest, because it's a very rare crash. So it kind of sucks. But uh, I got the screenshot and it crashed online. This, this is sort of triggered. Well, so it's not going to be that much of a problem because we're not going to assert this, right? On the uh, development. But we should have a sound. Because if we. If, uh, Oh, you know what? I don't know if we should. Uh, honestly, I don't know if we have a sound on because we already out. Was it really this line? 106, yeah. So, 
I'm not sure this is this should be asserting. But anyways, I want to change the way it's structured. Uh, because the, the thing, uh, you are very, they are very cruel in Brazil, especially cartels and prisons. Dude, what do you mean? <laughs> There's crime everywhere in the world. <laughs> it's not different here. <laughs> uh, so, the thing we're doing, we're iterating for every sample, we're going through every sound. And that's not very cache friendly. And uh, so we want to do the other way around. We want to do like for every sound, we want to go through every sample because they are sequenced, right? And finish. The same thing of doing the iterations to the... Same thing for looping over the, the buffer at, uh, Y first and then X because this is tightly packed. So we want to iterate that inside the other one. Just as this is tightly packed, so we want to iterate this inside... Oh, this is tightly packed, the samples. So we want to iterate this inside here, not the sounds. Very, very cruel. I don't know if you have some experience, man, with that, but... Yeah, they are, just like any criminals, man. <laughs> criminals are very nice. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to just copy this function. Uh, normally, I would just commit to the source control, but since I'm just committing between uh, streams, I'm just going to make a code backup here. For this function, because we are going to break it. Uh, and it, the idea is for every sound, and, and I did do this for my game jam game. So if you have a hard time, because I'm really tired, to be honest, but I want to do this because I want to play the game a little bit off stream just to make sure that everything's working. And uh, since this is a big change, I want to play in the, the other, the new system, I suppose. And this game that I did for the game jam, I uh, I worked on the audio like this. But it's not 100% the audio, though. A lot of people said that they couldn't hear any audio, which that was problematic, to be honest. Uh, okay. So the idea is I'm going to iterate through the sounds. Okay, oops. I'm going to iterate through the sounds. And if the sound is not active, I'm going to continue, so I'm going to need to iterate through that sound. If the sound is active, but yeah, see, that's the thing. If the sound is active, it shouldn't have a sound. But because of some racing conditions, maybe it doesn't have, but I can just skip that, there's no problem. Sound and samples, same thing. I'm not going to do the volume here, the, vo the volume has to be done per sample. So, yeah, and the sound volume. If we have a volume thing. So this is it. This is it. Now I'm going to have to iterate through the samples. Like for every sample. Here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For every sample. I'm going to move the, the volume. Um, and then if there's volume. Yeah, this should be pretty much the same thing. Okay, now let's, uh, how do you get graphics in C? Uh, well, we just ask Windows to display a buffer for us. You can watch, you can watch the first live stream on YouTube. I'm going to link the YouTube channel on the, on the comments there. You can go to my YouTube channel. If you watch the first stream, which is a making a game in C from scratch episode one, uh, you can see we created the render from scratch there. There's also a tutorial about how to get uh, drawing graphics in C++, which is the same thing we do in C in this case here. How to learn C? I learned C++ or C likes C++ through Handmade Hero, which is pretty cool. HandmadeHero.org, but it's kind of a not very friendly for super beginners. That's why I'm making these tutorials. It's kind of a Handmade Hero for more beginners. Uh, but yeah, it's super cool. But it's not very friendly for beginners. That's why I'm making my How to Program a Game in C++ for Beginners series. And this series, which is a little bit more advanced. And I'm also going to do like a super for beginner, a super beginner friendly 
series later on and stuff. To help people to learn how to program, yeah. Okay. So, uh, since this... Oh, so I, I do have to, to zero the buffer every frame now. Update audio. I could zero them up there, or I can zero them up here. I think I'm going to do this here, right? Right before... Oh, I, I update... Update the game audio. I'm going to mem set the this sound buffer dot what is it? Is it samples? Yeah, samples. Zero. I'm gonna set. Is it correct? The mem set. Is it mem set? Yeah. See the value and then the the count. I'm gonna do the number of bytes to lock. So, oops. So sound buffer samples to write. Samples to write times uh, the channel count. Times the size of a of an S16. What does a basic game require? Like very, very basic game. Uh, three things. It requires uh, somewhere to draw pixels to, so it requires a drawing buffer, right? Some memory to to draw pixels. It requires the input. You know what? That's it. Only two things. <laughs> and if you watch that series, I think you're gonna really enjoy it. My how to program a game C++ series. I think that'll be for you, man. Uh, because it's a very simple game, it's super quick. I, I it's all, almost it's over half done the game. I mean, in the last tutorial, we added the gameplay. So we have to do is cut uh, some do some polishing. I think there'll be like two or three more tutorials because I want to add like an AI and a menu and stuff. But this is super simple, and you're gonna get the whole thing. Like understand exactly what it needs. Uh, size of sound buffer uh, times uh, the channel count. Channel count. Okay. Okay. So instead of adding that to the to the uh, left sample, I'm going to I'm gonna add that to the at plus plus. Well, we can do like at equals this at plus plus at plus equals this. Right and add plus plus and at is just the sound samples, just like we were doing before. So we're gonna iterate through every sound sample for every guy. Okay, conversion from after two to yeah. To be honest, this is wrong. This is what we should be doing. So, yeah, this is the left sample, and this is the right sample. Right sample, okay. And then the, we set the add like this. And the max and min can be like. Let me set up here. Sound. On the, yeah. Move towards the yeah, other. We did this. Now, we're probably going to break everything, to be honest, which sucks. But we're gonna have to. I sub now. We should be getting. Well, I I, <laughs> I don't monetize YouTube yet. I don't have. I don't have. A, you need a thousand subscribers. So sorry. If you want to give me zero dot zero zero one dollars, you could have to do so on my HIO page. But it's where you can download the source code. So you can download the source code for all these products there. 
this project, Breakout Game Games Out, it's there for free. You are welcome to give me a tip, like 0 0.001. I don't think you can give 0, 0.0. You can give one cent, though. Uh, and uh, the tutorial series for beginners, which is this one. The games look like this now. It's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Let's get compiling. Memset samples. Okay. It's not a pointer. I don't know. I don't know. Let's hope. Let's hope the audio works. I'm gonna put in my my speakers here. I'm gonna turn on your volume only if you guys. Uh, only if you guys. Only if it works. Brazilian chicks have big butts. They have big butts. They do. Thankfully. <laughs> So we don't hear anything. Well, may maybe I'm do. I'm just going to, because my speaker sometimes go to sleep mode. I'm gonna make sure I can hear. Oh, so I do hear. I heard something. Yeah, can you guys hear it? I suppose you heard. But the problem is mixing. But I suppose that's expected because we didn't finish 100%. To be honest. Uh, that, that was good. That was a good uh, error for the first time. Instead of just adding, I'm going to plus equals. Because there should be already information on the add. So it just added the last sound. That's why it didn't work. Permission denied. What? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, it's not 100% mixing though. Can you guys hear it? That was pretty funny. Let me turn your volume. You're not going to be deaf. Hopefully. Okay, so we crashed. Reminds me of DX Balls. I don't... I don't know if I know this. At was zero. Zero? What? What? Update game. Did I change the wrong function? Oh, oh no, I didn't change the wrong function, but this is wrong. I uh no, maybe I did. Oh I did. I did. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add that, then I'm gonna add the sound position. Every frame. I am going to have I am going to have to think about this as well, the synced sound. Do we have synced sounds? Or oh, we do have the, the two music are synced. Let me see the link. Let me show you guys the link uh, Harney sent. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that game mode was pretty. Was was uh, I don't I don't know if I, I don't know if I got to show you guys the other game modes. Uh, yeah, so we start out as a clone of Breakout. Like this. And we got full audio. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then we have breakout with power ups. So it's like the one that you showed. Okay, so at is a no pointer. Why is at a no pointer? Sound samples is not a no pointer. At plus equals this. 
Why did that became a null pointer? That doesn't make any sense. What happened? I probably played a lot of sounds at this point. I know Java, I want to use it to make games. Uh, there's a great tutorial, a great uh, uh, Thin Matrix has a great OpenGL series using Java. I also learned a lot from that because, you know, OpenGL is OpenGL, right? Open... OpenGL. So he shows how, how do we make games with a Java lightweight game library, something like this. That could be pretty useful. Dude, that's so weird. Uh, well, but I wanted to show the game. So I'm just going to make sure that at uh, it's not zero at these points. So assert at while I show the other the other game modes. But the interesting thing about the game is this point. We play the older arcade games as if they were all breakout. Oh my god, yeah. So that's the cool thing about the game. Then you have Tetris. Then you have Space Invaders. Yeah. So that's the idea about this game. Okay, so we've crashed again. Oh my god, we crashed so many times in this audio. This is a new audio system. Exit violation reading location zero. Which one is location zero? Um, is it sound? Sound is undefined? Am I optimized or what? I am optimized. It's kind of weird that sound is not defined. Oh, maybe I'm here. No, at, at is okay in this run. Then I add position. The sound multiplier. It's so weird, man. Why why don't I see sound? I'm gonna I'm gonna run a debug build and try to get these crashes. I don't know, that's why we should it was good to add this new sound system. The other one was crashing also, so it's not it's not a problem that this one is crashing. So probably next time I'm gonna do an audio cleanup. So we may have like two more streams ahead of us. I was planning for like 25 episodes. So 20, 24 will be okay, 23. Oh, we also have a sound not finishing. When we, when we, back, when we back to the menu, can you hear that? Yeah, so let's fix that pretty quickly. So, game. Whenever we we uh, transition, let's see, change game mode. Whenever we change to the menu, we need to set the well set the force field to zero. But the force field sound. Let's see. It's funny. We're playing that twice. So I suppose that's the one problem. Force field sound. 
So we set that to the invincibility alpha. So I'm gonna set the invincibility alpha, which is a hack, I suppose. Invincibility alpha. Yeah, I'm gonna set that to zero here. Sound was a no point. That's so weird, man. Sound. It says the sound was a no pointer. And it totally wasn't. See? It's telling me that it's one. I don't know what's going on. Exception thrown. Sound. 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 It's a no point. Except it wasn't. Read. I don't know, man. I think I'm not going to. I think I'm not going to 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 do this sound system thing because sound playing sounds I don't know. Does that make sense to you guys? Sound sound was a no pointer, but sound sound is not a no pointer. See, if I said the next statement, everything works. I think this may be a multi threading problem. like this for today. And uh because I'm really tired to debug this. Maybe next week we're gonna do really buggy. And maybe we're gonna redo the audio system. Oh my redo I mean the previous version and not do a new version. It's funny now it doesn't crash. Yeah, I am going to have to test that a little bit. Yeah, the sound doesn't sound nice. Yeah, I see. There were a couple of uh, unpleasant noises. Yeah. Okay, but I think that was great though. Like redo, like review audio. We did a lot of stuff. 
with the AV cleanup. Is the watch win on Visual Studio per thread or is it global? Well, that's a nice point. I have to assume that it's per thread. And but it was weird that that uh even though let's see if I have like which thread is this. Yeah, it has to be per thread. Because if I change it, well, no, it's global, I suppose. Oh no, now sound is, is grayed out. So I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I could just add a bunch of certs as well, <laughs> but I don't know. A cert. Let's see. There's a cert. We can assert like sound, sound. We are already asserting it, but whatever. This is perfect. Sometimes it's not perfect. It's the worst kind of bug, right? Yeah, see? That was a very unpleasant noise. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has to do with threading. I have to make the other more threads safe next time. I think just by making more atomic ops on the audio, it would work better. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that next time. Make it more threads safe. Okay, it was awesome to write that part of today. That was pretty cool. That was pretty unexpected. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial as I did uh, this live stream, really, because it kind of a, was an open development kind of thing. You can follow me on YouTube, on youtube.com slash danzaydan uh, to see every video that I'm making. I'm doing not only the live streams, but also like devlog stuff and uh, tutorials now. For C++ for beginners, I'm going to do some crazy, some crazy more advanced stars later on. You can go to my itch.io page, which is dandadin.h.io, and download this game with the source code and my, all my other tutorial games. And now you can also go to the Steam page of the game and wishlist, and please do, because it's awesome. We are, we are going to release this game on Steam, and we, you can see the whole process of creating it. So you can watch the whole thing up until the Steam uh, release. So you can actually your wish list. Why don't you have Instagram? Well, why would I have an Instagram? <laughs> uh, you can add to your wish list and uh, that would be pretty cool as well. And this is my other game as well if you want to buy it. <laughs> it's pretty cheap. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.